You see that where that bar is? You look, that's H&B Diner. And uh, he was up like 40 grand. We would go out every night, get cocktails. He was on fire. He had two bookies strung out. <laughs> you know, I would ask him, what do you need? You know, it was amazing. And then it just started. It was just a slow decline. Like once yeah. January of 83 came, it was over. Did he keep and keep he, betting? He kept betting. And then Super Bowl weekend came, and it was the the Redskins yeah. against the Killer Bees from Miami. Right. And he bet everything on fucking Miami. The whole wine box. And he sat on everybody's bets. And I'll never forget, he just lost everything. And he had to go to the bookie and make a payment deal. Yeah. And the guy who knew his father would come into the diner. So he had to get a job from uh, 6 to 2 in the morning pumping gas. Nice. And then from 6 in the morning to whatever at his father's diner. Imagine if he didn't live in Jersey. He couldn't even get that job. Shit. <laughs> I, thought, he, I thought this was going to end up being one of those stories where he disappeared and nobody knows where he is now. No, no. He's, <laughs> he's not. Well, I'll tell you what. He never really recovered, guys. Yeah. How much did he lose? That was the peak of his he life? Ended, he ended up losing like 40 grand. Oh. When you're making 300 a fucking week. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying 200 a week, you know, and... And Vig and whatever the fuck he was paying. Like, it took him a whole summer of working 75 hours a week, and he paid the people off, and that was it. And then I know he doesn't watch sports anymore, but after that, it was like life happens. You know, sure. like you, yeah. you, you have to go to school, and you, and you start watching one quarter of a game. I remember in this country when Monday Night Football meant something. Oh, sure. Yeah. You didn't get, I remember fucking going, you know what, Lee? I ain't going on Saturday night. Because I want 40 bucks to go to Monday. That was it. Yeah. And this co- 20 years ago, Monday night was your big fucking night. You know, you went out on Monday night. You sat at a bar. You got wings or a burger. You talk right. shit. You know, it was great. That 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 went away. I don't understand how the fuck that went away. Well, there's no I, there was no competition either. There was what? Like two other channels was the competition back then. Yeah, but right? still. It's, still hey, it's, this is, it's on ESPN now. It's and, on ESPN. And, they, and they got rid of the classic Monday night song too, you know. You know what that, was it? I don't oh, remember. Ready for some it was football, a, yeah. or something like that. Well, now they have Sunday night. This is how much the country changed. And Thursday changed. night. Well, when I was growing yeah, up, exactly. Sunday night you watch fucking uh, <laughs> Lawrence Rider. Welk, uh, and then you watch whatever the fucking do with the animals. Right, Manimal. No, no, no fucking Manimal. <laughs> the guy on NBC. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, Lawn, whatever. Wild Kingdom. Uh, That's what America did. Now they said, fuck Wild Kingdom. Kids don't need to know about mountain lions. Because okay. <laughs> we got Discovery on. Channel. If you want to, no, you know, yeah. no. That's but, what, it's a family night, but now they put football on. And I get it. I get it. It's all for Vegas. You know, I always say this. Thursday night is the last supper, whether it's college football or, right. or, or football. That's how they get you. Then, then they give you a Friday night off. And then Saturday they nail one hand. Saturday late show, yeah. they nail the other one. Then you bet Hawaii to come back, they nail your head. <laughs> then Sunday, you got the morning, they nail one foot, they nail the other foot, they stick a cross in your heart. Yeah. And Monday night football is the fucking thorn. That's all. It's the same thing. It's all, it's the same thing. When you're betting Hawaii late night on a Saturday night, you got a fucking <laughs> gambling problem, okay? You got to wait till four in the morning to get the fucking score in Hawaii. Oh yeah. my God. I, I, I remember that shit. So. That's what happened with me. Once I didn't gamble, or once I didn't have those people around me that I would cheer for them, yeah. then I said, well, I can't watch a fucking game. That's it. And that's why I don't like, I swear to God, I love the UFC, but I don't like on Fox Sports when they put the line under it. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. What, is it, what does that mean, the line under it? The line, they put the betting line under it. Ah, okay. That's it. That's the end yeah. of the sport. Now it becomes something else. I enjoy it as a sport. I talk a lot of shit. But I've only probably bet two bets on the UFC. If you didn't bet Frank Yeager against Sean Shirk, you fucked up. Right there, you fucked up! I, I, listen. He was on the climb, you fucked up right I've, there. I've never, never bet on an MMA fight. I'm, because, I, you know, you, I'll take, you, I'll take you're one. You're American. Yeah, you're Pete Rose Jr. Yeah, exactly. You I'm from Pete Cincinnati. Rose Jr. We'll Hall of Fame, baby. Hall of Fame. You got to think about that shit. Yeah, exactly. So, is it kind of weird doing something that people are betting on? Well, I'll tell you, it, it is. The, it, it, uh, just to back up, I, the, I used to teach high school math, if you, if you didn't know that. And I always tell people, like, I'm a guy in this world who, at one point in time, would put my signature on a piece of paper the kid did not want to take home. It was called a progress report. Right. And then you fast forward, and several years later, I'm the guy who a kid would be standing in line for several hours for to get my signature. This is really, really weird juxtaposition in life. I can remember the first time that I actually went to Vegas, and 
I mean, I've seen like you know, see my face, my face on billboards, and I've been to like Tops, the trading card company, and had trading cards, and my face on like um, blackjack tables and poker chips. And the first time I walked in and saw like betting lines on me, and, and fortunately I was the favorite the first time. I don't, I don't think I could have handled looking up and being like, <laughs> "Wow, I'm I'm the plus five <laughs> seventy, <laughs> really." So, but yeah, it, it, it's weird just to see that transition. But at some point in time, you just you get used to the fact that it's just part of the game. I just. Uh... It's like they took the virginity away from me yeah. for a guy like me. And I, you know what? I, I get it. But, you know, it's like I'm always a guest of Joe's. I'm a guest of Dana's. When I see Dana, I always say thank you very much for the tickets to the fight. I always behave myself because I have to be better than, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I think in my head. Yeah. When I take you somewhere, you got to be better than him. Mm-hmm. You got to, you know, it's like I, I used to work for my in-laws uh, 30 years ago. And, I, and they always said you were the hardest worker I had. Because I took pride in that. Because I didn't want them to say, he don't work hard. He's just a brother-in-law. So my mentality is, so when I started going to UFC, I was fucking around. But I would never bet. I tell people I bet to fuck around the videos. But I always felt guilty if I bet. So for me, the first time I saw the lines in a UFC fight, I just flipped. I just fucking flipped. Because it becomes something else in my mind. It's not just two guys for the enjoyment. Now people are going to bail out on a Saturday night fight. Do you follow me? So now, instead of us just watching it because Rich Franklin's fighting somebody, now I'm watching Rich Franklin because I'm bailing out on Rich Franklin. I'm going to bet Rich Franklin to get me back college football. I <laughs> lost college football all day. Yeah. And Saturday, I probably lost Friday night NBA basketball. So back to this shit. This is very interesting here. Get in here, too. I'm in. You're the man. I'm in. You know, I love you to death. I love you back. Where did you go to college at? You see, University of Cincinnati. No shit. So yeah. you're all the way to the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. My friend went to University I, of Cincinnati. I, I didn't live on campus. I, uh, I commuted there and uh, drove in every day, drove home every day, and got my uh, undergrad and my graduate there. So, and math. Lost. You're that good at math. Uh, no, I got my undergrad in, in math, and I think I could I think I could have gotten my graduate. I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly intelligent fellow. Wow. However, uh, there, something happens to people between the time they get their bachelor's in mathematics and their master's in mathematics. They start doing things like tucking their jeans inside their socks and leaving <laughs> one half, like one half of their shirt out. Uh, you know, like stuff yeah. like that, like snot on the handkerchief, visible for the start class get, to see. Getting a little Einsteinish, yeah, a little exactly. kooky. You know, the guy who the guy who's like figuring out like you know theory of relativity, but can't tie his shoes right. or find his way home or remember his address. Boulder, so. Colorado. Yeah, so, so I kind of it's like it's it's kind of like you know when you've gone out drinking and you know when to like cut off, like yeah. What's that like? No, I'm just no, kidding. I, I, you know what? Actually, <laughs> honestly, I've never drank. Oh, okay. I've never drank, so I wouldn't know. I'm I'm like uh, I never drank, never drank my whole life. Right. And so I was like the best friend you could have had in college. Sure. Was, Good. You're right home. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, when you were teaching math, were you active in any? Were you wrestling, or you were just going to a gym after? Yeah, no, I, I, so I got, the first UFC was the year I graduated from high school. It was uh, my, uh, you know, that, that year, my senior year of high school. And so I was, um, after, I re- legitimately, it was like the Rudy of my high school football team. I didn't even start. Was uh, just, I graduated, weighed 150 pounds, soaking wet, and uh, wasn't very fast, wasn't very strong, didn't have the God-given talent. Hit a growth spurt my, uh, my freshman year of college. By the time I was like midway through my sophomore year, I came back and, I look like the guy who ate Rich Franklin rather than Rich Franklin. I'm sorry. And people are like, whoa, what happened to you? But I got involved in martial arts my senior year of high school. And then I was just one of those guys. Like, I went to college. I trained. And once if I take on a hobby, like, I'm either all in or I don't bother with it. And so, I mean, I literally I went to campus, took my classes, got my butt off of campus, and I was training six hours a day every day. My senior year, one of my friends had dared me to, uh, to take a fight, a local amateur fight. I did. I did well. Led to another. Led to another. Started teaching, started had a professional fight. My first pro fight, I made two hundred bucks. I was like, "Whoa, I can make money doing this!" Like, cha-ching, and uh, just led to another fight, led to another fight, and and I was fighting the whole time I was teaching. And by my fourth year of teaching, I thought, "I wonder if I can actually quit doing, you know, do this full time." I had picked up a guy who was kind of managing me at the time, managing my quote unquote career, and uh, I talked to him about it, consulted him. He said, "You know what? I think you do a really good job at this." So. Um, you know, give it some thought, and we took some we took some strategically planned fights that year to kind of position me into the UFC, noticing who I was. And you got to remember, man, back then, like I'm fighting in like 19, you know, 1998 was my first fight. I'm I'm showing up at places where there were no weight classes. Like 
there'd be a, you know, I, I would walk in at like 205 pounds fighting somebody that was 260. Like this, these things happened. Right. And, and it was just, it was, <laughs> it was a different sport back then where you just brought your own gloves, you know, yeah. like you're like, here, I'll, I'll fight in these gloves. And they're like, okay, check. He's got his own gloves. And it's like, did anybody check those for actual padding? You know, it was that kind of stuff all the time. And uh, the UFC was immediately televised, right? It wasn't something, it was like invented for television, right? Or no? What, no. What, no? It was when did it start? You said it started in 93. 93. 93. 93 was the first one. And actually, what, really, the, like the UFC, if you look at the history of the UFC, like the Gracie family, who is, I mean, these, these guys are smart. The, the, the UFC was designed basically to showcase that martial art as what right. it was. And they, they, they were selecting people in various martial arts to basically show. They took a guy like Hoyce, who is very unassuming, and said, we're going to take a guy. We're not. We're not even going to take our like. I mean, it would have. Imagine like because you look back in the day and you look at the early UFC fighters. You look like a guy like Ken Shamrock. And you expect him to be the toughest guy. I mean, that guy, he looked the part, and and he was legit. Like he was a legit MMA guy for all those early athletes at the time. You know, but they didn't want somebody that looked like that out of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu camps. They wanted somebody that where people are like, what this guy? Like right. this guy's beating guys like Dan Severn. Like right. You know the beast. He's submitting the beast, like really, and so they did a good job with that. But you know, the UFC went through that period where they were, you know, they were banned in forty-eight states, and, really? and this is the time. Yeah, this is the time. Before, well, they had no rules, right? Yeah. <coughs> well, they, I mean, it started with like three rules. You know, yeah. I remember no gouging eyes, no biting, no fish hooking. I you saw know. a fight oh, where somebody was just stomping on this guy's balls. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. fish oh, hooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that what's was. the fight when the guy ripped his ponytail? <laughs> Dude, um, oh my god! Yeah, every time was, I uh, think of that, I laugh. No, he, he, remember, he. Yeah, I, can't, I can't remember the fight. I'm lo- Oh man, it's on the tip of my tongue too. Um, it's not Eric Pulse. Who was the blonde hair guy? And he had his hand like woven right into this guy had a ponytail, and it was like, you know, he fought the next time he fought, he had a nice little trim crew cut. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm done with that. So it was That's legal just, back then. His handle. Yeah. But yeah, they moved towards sanctioning. But you know, I like I quit my teaching job in '02, and uh, you, you know, the UFC, the first, the first Ultimate Fighter was '05. Oh, five. Yeah, '05. No, oh, yeah, '05. So. It was like it, w- it wasn't until '05 where the popularity of this sport started taking off, and at that time, like I'm walking away from a solid job, you know, a good, good degree job, a career, and, and telling my dad, like, "Hey, by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit my my job to go fight for a living." And my dad just was not a happy camper at the time, right? <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, it was it was it was a definitely a different sport back then. But it started hobby. I had I had n- no clue that I would do this professionally. These kids that you were teaching, those years, you just keep in touch with them. Some of them. Some I, of them. Yeah, I got a few that, that hit me up on email here and there. Uh, you know, I got about a half a dozen that that stay in constant contact with me. Maybe another half a dozen that are just sporadically kind of hit me up here and there. And Not I, to take you off thing, but today I finally got a hold of my eighth grade teacher. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you apologize? <laughs> no, he was one of my main dudes. Wait, Barone uh, or? No, I, I took him to meet my one seventh grade teacher. Seventh grade. I'm real tight with my teacher stuff. Oh, okay. Real tight. Because I, mean, I, I would figure, I would figure you no, could go I'm, one or two ways. Like you'd be in my class, I would either love no, you to death no, or I'd be no, like, man, no. Once this, we, this guy makes my job. No, no. I would bust your balls in the beginning. Once you took me outside and said, "I'm here to help you," yeah, I'll get you from a C to an A. We're done. Like that, We're yeah. done. We're done. We're good. That's it. Now nobody could fuck with him. And that was my thing with these teachers. Mr. T, once he told me you could do whatever you want, but this needs to be done. Yeah. Done. Uh, Barone, I... I well, you tortured you him at the beginning. I fucking threw away his car keys. <laughs> Last day of school with all his fucking keys. I threw him in a garbage pail. He never found me. He had to go home, get his wife. Didn't talk to me. But the first day of school, I was anticipating he's going to fucking kill me. He never mentioned it again. When I found out he was in the Hall of Fame for basketball... It was all low. Yeah. Like, it was all low. Uh-huh. I like, what, what are you in the Hall of Fame for? Free throws. Are you fucking kidding me? That was it. I, I You know, and then this guy, I like this guy because he was uh, he was the mayor of Weehawken. Weehawken is a town in New Jersey when you come out of the bridge right there, a tunnel. And my father died in that town. That, in that, the, we were in Union City, and he died in that, in that hospital with a heart attack. But he was the mayor of Weehawken before they developed that to look into New York City. So he was the first guy that started taking racketeering and all that shit. Mm-hmm. They arrested him in the classroom, though. Oh, because he was also a teacher. He was also an eighth grade teacher. <laughs> wow, but he was solid. Like he was the mayor of Weehawken. Mm-hmm. But North Bergen is so corrupt that they were like, "We'll play ball with you, you know." But why don't you come on down here and teach? 
And he went to London. Why, the, why would a mayor <laughs> of a town be an eighth grade fucking teacher? Well, this, this is like the uh, this is like the seventy three Reds you're talking about. They're like, hey, yeah, get on out there and pitch. For yeah, us. Just go on he pitch. also yeah. short stuff. I never yeah. pitched before in my life. Just go out there, give it a try. Columbia. It's not that hard. It's a ball. It's like yeah, throwing. Yeah, just throw the fucking ball. <laughs> Can you believe that Bench used to play first base? <laughs> Nobody remembers that. And the guy that would relieve Bench mm. was just a couple pussy hairs. As good as Bench, Bill Plummer. Bill Plummer would rock with the best of them. Doesn't his son play for somebody? His son's a quarterback. Uh, Jake the Denver Plummer? Broncos. Yeah, yeah Jake. Yeah, he's he's been so. gone for a while. I think so. Something to do with that. But that's amazing. That I wonder what those kids look at you as, like when they're at a bar now, and all of a sudden they're watching UFC. On well, League. you got to remember, I was fighting when I was teaching. I just wasn't in the UFC, but I was fighting in these uh, the smaller shows. So you, would go, you would go to class with a black oh, guy all the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no teeth and shit. Yeah, that's right there. Kids no, love got, that shit. I got all my teeth. Though. Kids <laughs> love that shit. Kids so. love you. If I had a teacher that came with a black guy, fuck. Yeah, I come. I come in on a Monday, just kick the can over when I got a black. I'm like, I had a bad weekend. <laughs> well, especially in math, because a lot of math teachers aren't that inspiring and like mm. they're not that cool. Like, like, the cool teachers are like the history teachers, usually like somewhere yeah. like English. Yeah, but and, but if if I had a cool math teacher, dude, do you know, listen, man. Once I'll, you can threaten the kids, it makes it yeah. easier. Do you know how hard it is to make math cool. Like for real. Oh, I hate it. I hated geometry. Algebra was cool. I, could, I just never understood shapes. I was fucking yeah, terrible. Yeah, but you know what? At least shapes you can see, man. Like algebra, like I mean, to me, it makes sense. But to a kid, like I, because I've been so I, I I thought I always thought I was a good teacher because I had kids in my classroom who would just sit there and they're looking at you like uh, like you're speaking Chinese. Yeah. Right. And I at that level, I'm like, I don't understand how this algebra can confuse you this much but I've been there before I've been there just at, at, at a 500 level math course when I was taking when I was in college when I was getting smoked by all these graduate you know these people that already they were taking as a graduate course and I'm the worst one in the class because I'm still an undergrad and they have like a year or two more math than me and so I know what it's like to be that guy in a class and that's what made me a great teacher I think but yeah it's no matter how cool you are as an individual you still got to come in and be like hey guess what today today guys we're going to learn how to find the foci of a hyperbola no I swear it's fun. Trust me. Just trust me. Let's get into this. You know, math is how you look at it, though, guys. Well, yeah. Math is how you look at it. Yeah. Not for nothing, Rich. I hope I don't offend nobody. Nah, when, I was, <laughs> when I was coked up all those years, when I used to get coked up, that's what I would do, math. A beautiful mind. I don't Diaz know. Just gets I would whole get wall. coked up to the gills. Coked up to the gazilles. You'd wake up the next day and be pages of math everywhere. <laughs> Guys, we can pay the gas bill. I fucking I'll figure invent it out. governments he's, and set payrolls and <laughs> budgets. He's I, got a cure I'm for e cancer in I'm a an notebook somewhere. Major. So, I, but let me tell you something about math. And I, and I, I told it's like my, the other day my 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 in laws made a fucking statement, and they're like maybe the baby's having a hard time speaking because Joey's teaching her Spanish, you know. And I believe this shit. You know, I've been taking jujitsu for fifteen months. It's finally starting to click. Yeah. Okay? I'm the type of guy, I ain't fucking Johnny Genius. So my algebra, I took algebra my freshman year. Remember, you could be a moron, and they would give you college prep courses yeah. your freshman and sophomore year. No, I was good at math. So they gave me algebra one. I remember the teacher he was gay as fuck. <laughs> and the only reason why I went was Lisa Trich's in that class. And her pussy must have weighed 50 fucking pounds. <laughs> and she used to wear clogs. I would just go in there just to, look, to see what her monkeys look like. Me and Glenn Conti, stinky. Mm -hmm. She yeah. would walk in the class and we'd just look at each other, just see the size of a fucking pussy. And that's why we went. I didn't do too good the first two quarters, and I would fuck with the teacher. And one day he pulled me aside. He's like, I might be a faggot, but I'll bitch slap you to death. And I was like, done. <laughs> We're solid. And I asked him, can he... Quit looking at that pussy and, and start he, paying attention. Yeah, and he asked me if he could, if I'd come in one day and work with him. I worked with him. And after that, he opted to be my algebra teacher for three years. Oh, that's awesome. Once you get math... You got it. Yep. It's just getting it. And for some people, it takes some people longer than others. And once you see it, same thing happened to me. With, with I, I've learned the biggest lessons about life through math because math makes you analytical. When I went to college, I was an econ major, right? And I didn't know. I, I couldn't get it, guys. I couldn't get it. And I was a CUOP dude, a minority dude. So I went to the department. I go, look, dog, I can't get this. <laughs> and they said, no problem. You get two hours of tutoring. We're going to hook you up with an Arab guy. And right there, I was like, I'm quitting tomorrow because I didn't, I didn't know nothing about Arabs or Persians. I know nothing. I'm a fucking Cuban kid from Jersey. And uh, the guy's name was Mohammed Zabib. 
And that dude working me three or four hours the same. I was like, Did he Fuck. threaten you like the other guy? Dog, let me tell you something. After a week, me and him became, <laughs> it was the biggest lesson ever. I ate some of the fucking Habib food. Yeah. I didn't eat the hummus. I never succumbed to hummus. Okay. Yet. Once you eat hummus, you're done. Have you ever tried oh, hummus ever? Yes, it's okay. disgusting. Okay. Really? Cubans invented hummus. Garbanzo beans. What are you fucking he don't, he don't we like have, hummus. We ate hummus how, and how it's natural. Like hummus? I don't like it, though. <laughs> you don't like ranch? You don't like hummus? I don't hummus. like ranch dressing. That's like being Asian like and not liking rice or something. No, I don't like hummus. It's disgusting. Wow. It's what did he call it? Like Arabian spackle? Spackle. <laughs> it's Arabian spackle. You see those houses in the kingdom and all those movies <laughs> that made a fucking hummus. When you see those little shacks they got out there. Instead of a gingerbread house, it's a hummus house. I so this 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 teacher, you, everyone knew he was gay? Mr. And this is back in the, the day? Teacher. Yeah, you know, he, he, had, he, he obviously had said, glasses. And he felt comfortable saying, hey, I'm a faggot. No, he didn't tell me. Oh, he, he told didn't me say that. afterward by myself. Oh, okay. Like, I must have goofed on him or something. He goes, hey, man, I might be a faggot, but I'll light you up. I was like, <laughs> okay. And he said, you know, if you need help with this, come to me like a man. Don't be a fucking faggot. <laughs> so I went to him and he helped me. And then once I caught on to Matt, he was done. I was getting bees and shit. He was, he was like blown away. Like, what happened? And I thought, I'd be an idiot in the get-go. But once I get going, you're finished. You know what I'm saying? You're fucking finished, dog. I'm not good in the first round. <laughs> if I can last, I'm, I'm slow out of the gates too, man. If I, I speed up as if I can last to the one minute left in the second round yeah. and get my composure and remember what muscle memory you you're taught finisher, me, you're finisher. You're finisher. I'll fuck you up. I'll get you. I'll get you. If the win lasts long and shit, then I'm good. You know. But it's it's people uh, always. I hate when people like get turned off by math. Math is fucking easy, man. If you get in that motherfucker, so I, well, I know what you're talking about being the worst in the class because. In algebra, they tried to move me from, like, regular to, like, the advanced stuff, and I lasted, like, two days, and then I had to go down. But in geometry, even in the regular class, I was the one kid in back, like, I don't understand a one word they're talking about. And it, it feels terrible. Like, science was like that for me, too. I wasn't really good at science. What the, about the what about opinion. chemistry, dude? That's when shit gets fucking that, nutty. I said oh. that, and that was that was. Do you, can you handle chemistry yeah, equations? Yeah, I can, I can now. Oh, well, my I'll God. I'll tell you a funny story. So... When I, when I when I resigned from teaching, uh, I resigned in O two, and then I was still working in at risk program for like I worked in at risk program up until about uh, I don't know about a week before I won my title. I was doing two, teaching two nights a week, and so these these kids they would sit in this this classroom on computers and they do all their curriculum on computers, but the teachers are there as to be like you know to to help them like you know tutor them and help them with tests and all that kind of stuff, and they they do their homework on the computer, their tests on the computer. And so I was the only math certified teacher in the entire building. So all the students would wait until my days of the week to ask math questions and science questions. And chemistry, obviously, is one of the high school right. courses they got to take. So they come in and they're like, all right, I'm working on this. So, the, the, you know, these two atoms form an ionic bond. With this <laughs> atom, it's a covalent bond. I'm like, I'm like oh, my God. I'm like, I, I'm going to have to go back to my electron configuration. Right. And so I had to go back in and relearn. Like, I had to relearn, like, high school chemistry just to be able to tutor these yeah. kids. But fortunately, when you have a math background, like, it, it translates – to sciences across the board fairly well. Right. But of, you know, except for biology. You know. Yeah. So God, biology was terrible. That's too. just a lot of words. That That's biology. as far well, as Well, hold I on. Got. What subject did you like? I, I was in history, English, and then when I got to high school and I started having video classes, that's, that's all yeah. I cared about. You're good at that? I could You're get... You're good at watching TV? No, well, well like, I like make it, but, like, I was the type of guy, I, if I didn't like it, I would just get, I could do enough work to get, like, a C plus, B minus, and then I was happy. It just if I if I wasn't interested in the class, but like cool history classes, cool English classes, I would actually work at. But I was lucky enough that I could do the basic minimum and get like a B minus, and I was like that. I didn't fine. like geography early on because I didn't know what I didn't really give a fuck about <laughs> where everything was. Yeah, I didn't give a fuck. I gave a fuck where New Jersey was. I, I could care. But then, then you all of a sudden you're stranded in Kentucky with nowhere to eat steak. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. Fuck. I wish <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> This is where Paducah is that Mr. Smith was talking Son about my sophomore bitch. year. He was right. There are no Asians here. Yeah. It's amazing like uh, how you look back now at your grammar school and your high school and you're like, I wish. I always liked school. I always enjoyed going to class. It's social. Absolutely. It's they, social. You go and you, you know, and, and some teachers, if they let you, broke their balls. And some teachers told you from the jump, don't break my balls. You know, now uh, the grammar school I went to was a little rough and tumble. And I saw, uh, there was one teacher, he's dead now, Earl Kingwell. And he was a high school basketball ref. And he would push kids around. 
and I saw him get beat up by a parent. I saw a gym Whoa. teacher. I saw a gym teacher get lit up by Carmine Balzano when they banged his head against the wall 15 times. For what? For hitting his son. Oh, wow. I saw some good yeah. shit. I saw some <laughs> interesting <laughs> shit. Well, I, I grew, so my era was that era when, when we could get hit and then like they quit swatting kids. Like as, I don't know, maybe like my uh, junior or senior yeah, year. A teacher could not do anything. Now. Oh, not now. And you scare a kid, though. I would, I, would, I would feel really bad for a teacher today because he, the thing with a teacher is that he has to cut this shit. It's like going to prison. You walk in, the first fucking spitball. You got to stop what you're doing and go, here it is. I will take one of you motherfuckers and throw you out the fucking window. You know, when I was growing up, that's how they did it. Yeah. Now you can't do that. You got yeah, you, like, but, but you, you just got no make leverage. Me, you, listen, you walk into class with a black eye. Yeah, no. Whether speaks, you could do it or not, they're going to believe you will. No, that speaks, yeah. that's that's yeah. the best thing in the world. Or a stab wound. <laughs> like or a like, knife still in your like, neck. Or like you got shot the week before or something like that. Yeah, I, listen, I got I got stabbed on my way to school today, but I'm gonna, I'm going to remove this, and we're still going to do algebra because that's how that's how badass. I remember, I, am. I still got this knife on me. Yeah. <laughs> when I went to high school, we had there was more respect for the teachers. The grammar school where I went to, it was uh, it was a, a, a working class white mentality. Yeah. Like there was only like maybe ten Spanish kids in that school. They were all Irish, Italian, a few Jews, some Germans. So, uh, you know, you, the teacher was more than your parent during the week. That's eight hours a fucking day. Absolutely. And that's what these kids don't understand. You know, I, I got to get along with them. But it was after we tried to push their buttons. We tried to, especially in grammar school. I had Levito, who I just spoke to. He had a wig. But on Fridays, he would let me sing My Eyes Adored You by Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. <laughs> so we were straight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Plus, he was a member of the Ecology Club, and he'd take us to these fucking things. Kingwell, I had a problem with. I had a problem when I went to Catholic school. That sucked dick. That sucked dick. Those nuns are fucking brutal. Fuck those bitches. <laughs> uh, but no, every, everything else was, was great, man. It's amazing that, that, that you went from teaching. I wonder how these kids feel today. That's what I... Yeah, the been, email you and shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've been back in the school a couple of times. Like uh, CNBC did a special on me once, and we went back to school, and somebody else did a special on me, and we went back to the school, and it was pretty cool. Like you run into some kids. Like the first time I went there, I ran into some kids who were still there that were there that were like freshmen when I was teaching, right. and, and now they're like about to graduate. And then it, it's cool. Like even after the fact, you go into school now, and obviously they're like rumors and legendary rumors and of you know fights I got into with students and stuff like that it's pretty awesome they so. asked you about that or are you clearing shit up or are you just letting the, nah, the myth I let it ride, live I let it ride, I let it ride. Yeah. somebody asked me how I went from a, I, was, I was on a show one time doing an interview and somebody said so how did, how did you go from like teaching to mixed martial arts and I'm like well there was I said I had this student in my class who was very disrespectful we got into this altercation and it was pretty bad I ended up going to court and they basically mandated an anger management course which led to some martial arts training and so it led to a career in MMA and I'm like telling this story like straight face and they're looking at me like and, and the interviewer was like I don't have anything to segue here like, you, you just see the look on his face like uh, that's inspiring <laughs> so. well the UFC must have loved it because like, a lot of the criticism was, it was like like barbarians and like too too intense but like to have a guy who has a master's degree and was a High school math teacher that, that yeah. like they must have well, came been in handy, huge. Came yeah. in handy because you know I was on like the Donnie Deutsch show once, and I did the Bill O'Reilly show with Dana one time, and we did that like I did a lot of stuff with the UFC, uh, with like the Associated Press and all that, and talking, just because you can talk intelligently about the sport and, and about the safety measures that they take and, and all those kinds of things, and so that's actually a little bit of, because of working with One FC in Asia, we're kind of running into the same problem, so I end up doing a lot of. The, similar types of interviews over there talking about how safe the sport is and what measures we go through for training for the referees and the doctors and, and pre-medical, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we there was a lot of time put into uh, into legitimizing this sport in public opinion, so to speak. Is there, any, uh, is there any fatalities at all in, in that sport? Or I think there have been a couple. Uh, like there was, and I know there was one in Russia for sure. But any of the fatalities, I think I think there may have been two documented cases. 
that dealt with fights. But um, that's that's kind of low for a, a, yeah, a full is. contact sport, right? It is. But here's the thing: like you'll find, like that a lot of these, a lot of serious injuries and stuff like that, they happen in organizations that don't have the rigorous like pre medical testing or just the, the testing that you had to go through. I mean, because like you're getting ready to get into a fight, I, I can sign up for a fight, and perhaps I have like I'm like this close to having an aneurysm in my brain, and then suddenly I'm half a round in, and I get hit three or four times, and that puts me over the top, you know. So people can sit and say, well, well, MMA is dangerous. Well, if this guy would have done the proper medical testing to begin with, then you never would have had this problem. You know, there's a lot of football players dying recently, like a lot of high school football players. Yeah. Like they're dying on the field because it's just so hot. It's crazy. You would think more more would happen in fighting. I I wasn't a a UFC fan when it first came out. I turned it on one day and said, are you fucking crazy? (laughs) (laughs) Are you fucking crazy? I was like, I'm not watching this fucking... And I also, when I came from Cuba, I joined up in martial arts. I loved it. And when I went to Jersey, I was in karate. I loved all that shit. I used to go to tournaments. And I was a martial art nerd. You know, I had all the weapons and the stars. Oh, me too, man. I, I, I've been to, like, every flea market, that, East Coast and West Coast. All that fucking shit, man. Ninja stars from all of them. This, when I'm bored, I'll just go to the martial arts Hall of Fame down here in Burbank. They got everything. Everything was invented three blocks from here. Like that martial arts store. You know that. Three blocks no, from here. I, it's the oldest. It's Gene LaBelle's. Oh, really? Gene LaBelle's in there every fucking day. You go in there and they still got Bruce Lee pictures. That was it. They used to walk those fucking streets. You make that right on Burbank Boulevard. You make the left on Burbank Boulevard. There's everything. There's jujitsu. There's Shotokan karate. Who teaches fucking Shotokan karate? Well, I started off in hey. Shonru, which is almost there we go. the same yeah. thing. Go Shonru, hey. Shotokan. These are all the things that, you know, now Taekwondo, but I remember there was no jujitsu when I, when I was doing no. yeah. You had to go to the Bronx. Like, some, there was a Brazilian dude in the Bronx that oh, took really? this shit that we take people down. Always judo. Cubans love judo. So there was always a Cuban, a judo place in my neighborhood down by 7th Street. Some Cuban That's guy crazy. that was in Russia. But it's amazing that I didn't like it at first. And it wasn't until I watched, and I was going like, you know, when you're going through Spike, and I watched. Rich Franklin. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I watched French, Rich Franklin like a week later, though. And I was very impressed. And I remember that you remind me of a dear friend of mine. Uh, my first UFC fight that I caught off the cuff was Anderson's first fight. Oh, Lieben. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. What is this? No, UFC. I called Joe the next day. I go, I watched that shit last <laughs> night. What the fuck? I, and this is so, I told you, I've been telling you for three fucking years to put it on. I told you, I've been asking you for years if you want to come watch it. I wouldn't go watch it. All you it. want to talk about is the Reds. You know, we got new oh shit. You know, I remember him taking me to a fight one time, and I just left. But he gave tickets to his lawnmower guy, and he kept asking me. They said they didn't see you. I'm like, I went. I just, they kept asking me about movies and shit. I didn't want to be bothered. I, I just couldn't go. I couldn't sit there. I didn't know what it was all about. It was Chuck, uh, it was uh, not Odell was fighting. The other guy, the Amer- Captain America. Randy. Was fighting somebody. I don't even know. And I was like, I'm not sitting through this shit. Where was, it, where was the fight? MGM Grand or something like Vitor? that. Vitor? No, no, I don't. Because that was, because when Randy fought Vitor, oh, he fought, I, think, I think he fought Vitor at the MGM and he also fought Tito at the MGM. But Vitor is the one when his eye got scratched and it ended in like 19 seconds or something. Because his, his yeah, the the doc the ref, the doctor wouldn't let him continue. Dude. And he lost his belt and because of it, yeah. And after that, I watched uh, maybe like Ultimate Fighter, mm-hmm. and then I got into it. I yeah. really started watching, like wow, and I became a fan. But it took me a long time. Like yeah. it really did. Like people kept asking me, "Don't you go to the fights?" And I'm like, "I wouldn't fucking go to those things, man. I'm telling you, that's that's crazy." That, I saw Tank Abbott, and that's what pissed me off. It, you mean you saw him in the, in the uh, cage? Yeah, and oh, I was okay. like, I'll never watch that. There's yeah. no need for that. <laughs> There's no need for that. What is that? Tank. For those on the outside, what Tank is Tank Abbott is just a guy with a beard. It looks like somebody was a biker. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to see that. I wanted to see, like, a martial art guy. Right. He was like he was like the, the, the great American lazy hope. He was know? like the uh, hacksaw Jim Duggan. Basically. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they have a Kimbo Slice versus Tank Abbott. That has to be terrible. But it's uh, it's really funny how it grew on me. Kimbo won that actually. And I and then I went to a fight in Miami. We were shooting a man show in Miami, and Joe was like, "Come over and watch the fight." 
and it was the the guy who was really tough that wouldn't get knocked out. The, the little, I thought, oh, fuck. Some little, kid, uh, little Hawaiian guy or something that just wouldn't get knocked out. Not BJ. And there was no, and there was nobody there in Miami. At this UFC, Shaq was there by himself. <laughs> like, there was nobody there. Like, nobody <laughs> was there. Maybe, like, maybe, maybe I fought because that was my first fight. In Miami. UFC 42. And uh, at the American Airlines Arena where the Heat play. 2005, maybe. Uh, Two three. Th- something like three. that. Yeah. yeah. That, could, that could be 2003, the man show. Yeah. It could be. With Rogan and those guys, yeah. that was yeah. it. The attendance was real sparse, and oh, there was, there was a free concert. There was a concert that was like at the time that was like like five real popular '90s bands, you know, like Seven Mary Three, Third Eye Blind, all that. Yeah, and, they, and they're like doing a free concert right next to the <laughs> right next to the uh, to the stadium there, and or the arena or whatever. And yeah, our, our attendance was maybe like right around eight thousand, like half capacity. So, and what was the first thing? What was your first? Uh, whatever the fuck they call it. You know, they have a fancy name for it. Did you study Muay Thai at first? Well, you were I, a high school wrestler? No, I start, so I started in uh, my traditional karate. Right. I was doing uh, Okinawa Shonru karate. Right. I got a second degree black belt in that. But about, I'll tell you what happened, man. About three years into my training, my, my instructor, his son, had come home from the Marine Corps. And about the same time, um, you know, I, I saw the first couple UFCs and I thought like, I was just doing this like, cause I wasn't a big kid, you know. I'm like, if I ever get in a fight, man, I better learn how to handle myself a little bit. So, there was a, a jiu-jitsu school down the street, and after I saw the first two UFCs, I'm like, you know what? I better start learning how to fight on the ground. And then one day, my instructor's son come home from the Marine Corps, and he had been doing Muay Thai. And so, you know, I'm, he's, you want to spar? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's spar. You know, and so I'm out there, and I'm doing this whole, you know, <laughs> karate stance, like cat stance, you know. And uh, he, all of a sudden, he just drops a shin kick on my thigh. Boom! Never, never felt anything like that before, and I'm like, <laughs> I like folded. We continue sparring. I looked at him. I was like, man, you gotta show me how to do these kicks, man. Like I've never seen it. And so then he started explaining what Muay Thai was, and uh, you know, I started doing that and everything. And it just, it just really just started branching out and evolving from there. Hey, you, you guys brought up throwing stars. Does does anybody teach that shit at all, or is that just in the movies? And no, shit? You, you just watch movies and you're <laughs> right. fine. I watch. Listen, I watched American Ninja one, two, three, and four. Right. And so I'm. Pretty sure that's like a PhD in ninja throwing. Right, stars. absolutely. What about the Last Dragon? You guys ever seen that one? Absolutely. <laughs> I saw that in Bruce a black Leroy. movie theater. There you go. In Harlem, like I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was I, I'm gonna walk out of this. It was awesome, man. Well, that was I, a it great was movie, phenomenal. Man. Phenomenal. They should redo that movie. Man. No, no. Leave it <laughs> yeah, out. they should. Leave it. In fact, <laughs> my first night ever at the comedy store, I walked in. I saw Eddie Griffin, Don Barris, but the guy in the audience was Tipoc. Ty Park the, was there with yeah. Eddie Griffin, the, the the dude. Vanity was in that movie. Yeah, she yeah. was terrible. The show got a Harlem. Show enough. Show enough. Who's the baddest, <laughs> who's the baddest mofo low down around this town? I mean, that was just, uh, and it's t- it's a great spoof. Fucking show gun. I saw that in a black movie. That was my black movie through the days. Yeah, you Didn't go a lot. Come on, 84? Which one? Shogun of Harlem, 84, 85. No, it was uh, Last Dragon. Last Dragon. Last, Last Dragon. Dragon. I'm sorry, Shogun of Harlem. <laughs> 85. Told you. From 84 to 85, I worked in New York City, but I didn't go to work till 5. Yeah. So I'm, I'm an early riser. So I would go into the city at 12, get a nickel bag at 181st. Beautiful. Roll it, smoke it, go to the Cuban place. And then there's a You're movie the theater. You're the Last Dragon. Come on, dog. There's a movie theater right there on 181st Street. It was like three movies for fucking 50 cents. Black people yelling and screaming. <laughs> The best movie I ever saw in there was Rambo. When he comes out of the weeds, when he comes out of the mud, when his eyeballs yeah. Oh, yeah. Black shit. people went <laughs> fucking bananas. <laughs> Till this day, I was so happy I was there. I was, yeah, yeah. My man just did not do that. My man just did not do that. My man just did not do that. You know, that was before like people were throwing N-words around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was still great. It was a beautiful life. And I remember I was sitting in the back. I was stoned to the weed. And I walk in and Rambo puts his hand around the guy. And he stabs him. And he opens his eyes in the mud. They went. Fl- I never saw nothing like that. And, you know, it's amazing that I've talked about this before. Black people, the ghetto they are, they like one white person and it's the goofiest guy like Marilyn Martinez had a ghetto husband from Compton uh-huh. ghetto with threads and shit like fuck that white motherfucker except Adam Sandler was the <laughs> guy when I did it in the longest yard his wife called me and she's like listen David wants to be an extra in the movie I'm like Marilyn what are you talking about 
it's a fucking football. What's wrong with Dave? She's like, Joey, I don't know if you know this. He loves Adam Sandler. <laughs> I go, I, I put him on. I go, Dave, what up? What up, dog? You like Adam Sandler, dog? That's my motherfucker, dog. <laughs> Fuck Eddie Murphy. They love Adam Sandler. Fuck Sam. Eddie Murphy. They love him. They They're love like baby him. Talk. I brought him on this set as my probation officer. I made him shake, comb his hair. I go, take the dreads out, and I'll bring you on the set. And I brought him on the set as my probation officer and introduced him to Burt Reynolds. And <laughs> Burt Reynolds and him talked for four fucking hours. Till this day, well, he's dead now. He would always tell me, you're my motherfucker for doing that, dog. So every time I see like a real hard-looking gangster... He has He's at a, home he laughing at like secret. Happy Gilmore. He likes the Beatles. <laughs> they got they got some fucking freaky they thing. They can't help. They can't they help. They can't it. help it. Like I, I met a black dude that was ghetto, and he was telling me about the Spash and Pumpkins one time. Really? And I'm sitting there going, "Oh my god!" I was listening to N.W.A. in your car. Yeah. And you're talking about how the Smashing right. Pumpkins rock. So, bro, different strokes with different. Next time you see a ghetto black dude. Yeah. Go up to him and go, what, like, is, what is You it? like Three's Company? Like Three's <laughs> Company. <laughs> Tell me a secret. Man, that's my motherfucking show. <laughs> Carol Carol Burnett is my bitch. <laughs> Way before that dude from Atlanta started dressing up like a woman. <laughs> What's the story, Rich Franklin? Look at you. You all right tonight? I'm good, man. Good. I'm happy you I'm fucking good. came out tonight. I'm having a good time. No, nah, this is what, hey, listen, this is, this is a conversation. This is what people want to hear. This is just a conversation. There's no drama. There's no. <clears throat> so in 1984, when you took that punch to his stomach, <laughs> who wants to hear that fucking frame? It's just, shit? did you or did you not see The Last Dragon? That's, that's all there is that's to it. The fucking land. That's a real martial art. It's something. Are you still training? I am. Jiu Jitsu oh. too? Oh, yeah. Where do you go around here? I, you know what? I haven't found I haven't found a good, like a, a bounce to a couple places. I went to uh, uh, George Oliveira's place in Hollywood BJJ there. Okay. Liked it. Um, went there a couple times. Uh, been to uh, Higgy Machado's place. That's where I go. Yeah. Like fun. yeah, I you, love Hegan. Good dude. Good yeah, dude. I like it a lot. Um, you know, I've been to a couple other places. I've been to Justin's place, Fortune's Boxing. Really? Yeah, and I like I like that up there. It's just you know, man. I, the the part of the problem is with Hollywood here is that when or L A. When you are in this area, if you want to go get a boxing workout in, it's your whole day. By the time you drive there, find parking, you know, screw around with all this stuff, get your workout in, and then drive back, like. You're gonna get caught in traffic both ways or whatever. It's just, it's a pain, man. So it's like you know, I'm, I'm out here doing other things too, and r rather than training six days a week, twice a day, it's like if I'm gonna do that. I might as well just stay at the gym all day long. So, um, so yeah. But I'll spend some, uh, you know, I, I spend a lot of time just general fitness stuff too. I like going down to the uh, little workout area on Santa Monica by the pier where the bars and stuff are. Have you guys ever been down there? The I don't think so. No. Oh my god, dude, they have like these. Yeah, it's Mil Muscle Militant. Beach on Venice, right? Oh, Venice well, Beach? No, it's not Venice. It's not Muscle Beach, but okay. it's right by the pier. They have like a climbing rope, like a military-style climbing rope. They have this like metal apparatus and stuff that you, you climb up, and they have like rings, like gymnast rings. And I mean, you guys go down there on a weekend, and you will see some wicked stuff. Like, you live down there? I don't live. Down there. I, I live. Uh, in a, I have an apartment in the uh, Westwood Century City area. So. It's funny because uh, I've been. I, I started Jiu Jitsu up here, but I went to a Hegan seminar, and he had. Yeah, and he kept calling me, going, "When well, you gonna come by?" And I'm like, "Fuck Beverly Hills! I don't want to fucking drive from the Valley of Beverly Hills to drive." And he man. fucking kept calling me. Yeah, like, where are you? <laughs> I wait. I, I wait, wait for my best friend Joey Diaz. I wait. Ha ha. Where are you? <laughs> and the yeah, fucking day I walked in, I walked right. in at ten to eleven. He goes, "Look at your phone. I was just calling you." Yeah. That's and I had to go. And you know what? I'm hooked. He's a good dude too, I, man. I, man, he cracks me up. He's a big dude. He teaches me big guy moves. No breathing, no flying through the air. You know, he just has... You're not doing flying arm bars or anything? No! Like no! <laughs> He's taught me some shit that he cuts to drama. Yeah. Like everybody else... You know, listen, and I realize, I go, when you go to, when you go to Cabrinha, he's 145 yeah. pounds. Cabrinha's going to teach you Cabrinha stuff, who I love. I love Cabrinha. He's All a style is bad like motherfucker, it, Cabrinha. Cabrinha. But then, you know, if you go to... Uh, Regan, he's going to teach you those moves. And he kept bugging me. I have exercises for you, my friend. Yeah. So Tuesday, I have knee surgery, just meniscus. They're going to oh, fuck up the arthritis. Yeah. But I'll be back in three weeks. I'll be yeah, over yeah. at Hegan's no, with a Meniscus bracelet. isn't bad. I've had that no, before. no, it's great. But I love him. Uh, Justin is one of, I feel, one of the best guys in Hollywood. Yeah, he's like a to, solid dude, man. Like, to me, like, as a friend, like, I, I go there. I call him once a week. I go there once a week. Like, I was there the other day at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, six thirty. I don't work out. I just go sit with him, talk with him. I play with the fucking dogs if they're there. I've known Justin for six or seven years. Yeah, and I think 
I've seen him throw people out of that gym. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful what does he thing. do? He fucking goes off, dog. Yeah. Well, then get the fuck out. And, and I like that approach of people because in this town, nobody says things to you because mm -hmm. it feels that it might come back to hurt them later. Like, you, right. won't, you won't do, you shoot your movie there or whatever. Some people in this town speak their mind. That's why. Have you met McAfoley? No. That's the dude. Who's, who's the that? old dude that's always there. The six foot six guy that looks like a fucking. He's 60 years old. Black guy? White guy. That guy shadow boxes 30 minutes every day. I'll call uh, him once a week, too. Next time you go, if you watch Friday Night Fights, when uh, Mike Tyson's old trainer, what's his name? My, the, the guy he went to after his trainer died. He, he hosts, he does like commentating. For Friday yeah, Night no, Fights no, on yeah. ESPN. Cool dude. Real. Got great stories about Yeah, Saturday. remember, I quit watching boxing because I started doing MMA. I know. I know <laughs> but you still got to watch. You got to go back to the yeah, fundamentals. Yeah. Of the Absolutely. Yeah. I have a you great know. boxing coach. Do you now? Yeah, a guy and, out of Cincinnati. Really good. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how uh, when, when people look at techniques and different techniques, like when, when, when GSB started utilizing the jab, you know, something as simple as the jab. Yeah. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to go train with Kenny Roach all of a sudden, but it's not Freddie Roach. I'm sorry, it's not Freddie. It's been there for years. Yeah. The jab has been there for years, like the sidekick. It's been there for years, yeah. and the sidekick is a tremendous fucking weapon. You could do a thousand things with it, you know. But it's uh, like when Machida came in, people couldn't believe how the karate thing. I saw it right from the. I saw it. I'm like, yeah. that's a point fighter. And that motherfucker's a point fighter because they used to drive me crazy when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. They come in, boom, or they fake, go back, come in, they trick you. Avoid you know, damage. Yeah, they avoid the whole thing. But it's amazing how you just said that when you went to the Muay Thai, you kicked that fucking cat leg. Yeah. You kicked that cat leg. You had no weight on it. Yeah. It's still fucking, oh, my God. <laughs> you guys ever been kicked in the thigh? No, I, I did Taekwondo for a little bit, and I wrestled in high school, but... Kick, I was him always the, kick him in the side, dog. No, I'm all set. You good? You sure? Oh no, I'm way too high for that. I'll just we won't. I won't. Just even, like I just a, I'll just drop it. Just just a little bit of it. All right. No, <laughs> trust me, you don't. I haven't. Have. If yeah. you could give me the thighsman. The th no, yeah. Before yeah. we leave, <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. You'd be walking funny for a day. Or two, oh my god. Sure. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? Thirty nine. You still got two fights in, in front of you. <laughs> You can still I, I, two more. I feel I feel good enough that I could probably do more than that. Of course, I say that now when I'm not in the middle of fight camp. Put me six weeks in the middle of fight camp, and I'm like, oh my god. Uh. And but, so, explain fight camp to me. Like before every fight, you well see. Here's a you got. There are two types of fighters, man. Yeah, the fighters that fight, and then when they're done fighting, they just walk out of the gym right. and they, they don't show back up for another couple months. And those are t usually the guys that, that are 40 pounds over their fight weight out of season. Right. You see somebody like, whoa, that guy fights at 205. They're like De Niro. Yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah. it's up and down. So you got those guys, and you got guys like me who never quit working. Like, right. I'm, I'm always training and keeping myself. Which is really the way to do it. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a lifestyle to me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super healthy with the way I eat. I'm very holistic with my nutrition. You know, I keep... Like I keep myself in line with God spiritually and, right. and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm re it really is truly a lifestyle, man. And and you know I'm, I'm never partied too hard. You know I, I work hard and I play hard, but my play is a different kind of play. I'm an I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie for right. sure by nature. But but I, I just I don't let myself stray too far off of that uh, that path. And um, but you'll what you end up doing is you end up really really clamping things down. Uh, and it depends. Like for me, um, I, since I don't ever let myself fall out of shape. I'm usually about an eight or nine week camp. There are guys that because they're so far out of shape, they spend like three weeks getting into shape. So it's like you're prepping for your prep. You know right. what I mean? But uh but then you spend eight weeks like basically preparing for a specific opponent. Right. You know, and typically like say you call it an eight week camp, like the first two weeks of that camp might be just general, you know, like your coach is looking at the game. For me, my coaches will look at the game plan. You'll have kind of a broad like sense, like we're gonna work some wrestling one day and some of this and this. We're gonna integrate like, these days. And then after you get past that two week period, then everything starts like getting very specific. Right. We're not just working wrestling; we're working these specific wrestling drills, and you start honing in on things. And you know, it just depends on the phase that you're in with camp and all that stuff. But you know, I mean, for eight weeks, you basically like you wake up, and that guy's the first person on your mind. You're eating meals; that guy's the per person on your mind. You're training; that guy's the guy you're thinking about the whole time. You go to bed; you're thinking about him as you're falling asleep, right. dreaming about him, not in a weird way. Sure. You know. Not in some tight valley to those shorts. In a God spiritual way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I believe that you would that you would stay in shape year round. I mean, that, yeah. that'd be the easiest way, and then you'd prepare for each opponent as he came. I mean, 
his my philosophy from what I've seen. I mean, you're 39. I still think you got two good fights. And, you know, you're still in great yeah. shape and stuff. But it's so weird how there's a big difference between 38 and 40. Dude, let me tell you, it's man. fucking amazing. You know, I, I I really started telling the difference. I could tell the difference like the year I turned 35. Um, that that was about the time that, and I can go in the gym. Like I go in the gym and I'll train like I'm 20. I'll outwork 20 year old kids all day long. You know, and it's 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 great being uh b- being seasoned. You know, when you have that experience, you know, because then you just like you just you know you know the game. Like you make up with you know with with what you may lack in conditioning because you're out of shape or youth or whatever you want to call it for knowledge. And uh, I can train like I'm 20 though. I mean, I go in and you see me training you're like, oh, man, that guy's a machine. But like, you know, I was when I was 20 years old, I would train for two hours and then I would go help my buddy move a couch. Right. And then I would come back to the gym and train for another <laughs> yeah. two hours. Now, man, I'm like, I train for two hours and when I push the way that I push, I go home. Man, I'm sleeping for for an hour, right. and just because if I don't, it's like it's like plugging my cell phone back in. You know, you got it. You got to recharge that battery. And if I don't yeah. do that, I'm shot for the next workout. Like I'm sunk. I went to Hegan's today and I had to take a nap after it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I got home. I made a protein shake. I went on the computer. And I just wasn't feeling good. Yeah. You get that point where something wasn't right. Like my yeah. ears were ringing. I'm like, <laughs> that was a little fucked up today. I forget. I'm 51. I should have done those last three things and shit. And I was like, fuck it. I just got up, took my T-shirt. I had already showered and everything. I was like, I got to take a nap for an hour. And I was exactly, I just slept an hour and I got right back up. Like, it's tough, man. Well, what, is, what is your sleep schedule, Joey? Because you're up early as shit. I, I got sick. So I, I started respecting my sleep schedule. Because that's the last thing you look at. You know, And it's it's one of the most important things. It's the most important. It's it's the fucking whole patois. It, just keeps everything fresh, your mind. And, you know, I could go four hours and rock and roll. Right. We do this at 8 in the morning. We were doing six this at 6 morning. for two for a year and a half. Yeah, well, we do this at 6 in the morning. If you do this at 6 in the morning, your chance to get me on no. the guest. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, the, the people think, like, when you're an athlete, they, like, you, I, they've seen Rocky. I actually talked about this, and, and sometimes when I do, like, motivational talks and stuff, you know, Rocky breaking, like, waking up before before the sun comes up, you know, cracking three eggs, drinking them out of the glass, walks outside, you can see his breath in the air. I'm like, man, I don't do that. Like, sleep is paramount to me. Right. I don't set an alarm. I, I almost never wake up to an alarm. Oh, okay. Never. I, you, uh, just, you just get what you need, and yeah, that's that. Yeah. I, Makes I, sense. I, I typically, I mean, I, I have, a, like, a window that I go to bed, but here's a problem, like, um, last like the last couple nights, and I'm I'm getting ready to go overseas, so I'm trying to kind of uh, adjust my sleep schedule a little, little bit. But I'm that guy that, um, I mean, if I go to bed at nine o'clock at night, I'll wake up in the morning at like five, and I'm like, man, it's too early to get out of bed, so I won't get up. Right. But if I go to bed at three in the morning, I'll 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 still wake up at like my set time is like about seven thirty or eight. So no matter what time I go to bed, I won't get out of bed till about seven thirty in the morning. Right. So, I, you know, I'm typically like, like I, I'm, I'm usually in bed like around midnight every That's night. That's where so. the math comes in. To figure out when to go to bed. Listen, trust me, man. I, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, I sleep, I, I pay attention to my, like my circadian rhythms and, you know, yeah. sleep in 90 minute increments and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I don't go so far as like lining my bed to the north and making right. sure, I'm, which, you know, I don't, I'm not set against or anything like that. Every little bit helps or whatever. Sure. But, you know, some people, they they make sure their bed is facing north south so they're lined up with the magnetic poles and right. some crazy crazy stuff out yeah. there. Yeah. I always wonder, do you, like do fighters sleep the night before the fight? Like I like I get excited for like an early morning flight and I don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. How like how how do you sleep flight like a or week, fight? You know, a week before that? Well, I'll tell you that's the it, really it doesn't like the, that excitement doesn't really hit me until I arrive. Like when I land in Vegas and I'm checking in, that's when that's when things get real. Then you're like, I'm here to fight. Why don't you put that car down for incidentals, baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit starts getting yeah. crazy. But uh, but no, it's like the most important night of sleep for me is uh, not the night before the fight, but the night before the night before the fight. So the weigh-ins? Yeah. Right. Because, I mean, listen, you ever go to bed, you have a really bad night of sleep, you wake up the next day, you're fine. And then all of a sudden, you, you can go to bed that night, get a good night of sleep, you wake up the next day and you're dragging ass. And you're yeah. Like, what the heck happened to me? Is because your your like your body can run off adrenaline just fine, um, but you know it, it, it's gonna dump eventually. And so I, it's like the night before the fight. It's that's not the. I mean, it's important, but it, the it's most important is the night before that. That's what keeps me performing at optimum levels. I, I just, you know, when I was twenty five and shit, I didn't believe in sleep. Really, three, four, five hours. You don't know. I didn't know. Yeah. The fuck did I know? You know, and then. 
I have this thing I like to get up just to see what the hell's going on. Yeah. You got to get up. You got to get up and pee, see what the fuck's going on. Sometimes I stay up, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I pray and I go back to sleep. Yeah. Last night I went to bed at 11.30, 12, and at 2, my eyes were wide fucking awake. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing with the fucking cat, and I'm like, no. I got to get some sleep because I'll stay up till 5. I dig that shit. Yeah, yeah, me too. I dig that shit. That's why if I'm home Monday night, there's no comedy on Monday night, really, you know? Fuck it. I'll take a 10 o'clock nap time. 9.30. I'll take a 9 o'clock. I'll eat a pot cookie. <laughs> I'll go to bed at fucking 9 o'clock. If I wake up at 5, I got a good 8. Sure. Yeah, My no. wife wakes up at 7. I got two hours of fucking writing, listening to music. I could read the newspaper. You know, I could read. I could write. I could write a few jokes. You start your day off on the right fucking foot, you know? You pick out theme songs for the day, too, oh, don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. I pick out three songs a day to get me started while I'm washing my monkey and getting prepared. <laughs> The other day I woke up and I was thinking of going to Cabrini's at 7 a.m. And I'm like, jujitsu at 7 a.m.? <laughs> no. That just doesn't fucking translate for me. But no. it's nice to do it one time. One time. <laughs> one time. Just to say that you went there at 7 a.m. I used to... Yeah, the uh, problem is you show up at a place like Cabrini's or, or Higgins at 7 in the morning, you know? Then they're calling you every day like, hey, brother, <laughs> you show up at 7 a.m. class tomorrow. And you're like, no, that was a one-time thing. They call you every day. You know, when it comes to that shit, I like doing it and getting it out of the way. Yeah, no, but I, I like, don't even show up at 7 a.m. class because no. I almost set that precedent. It's like, no, no, oh, this no. is a guy who likes to train at 7 a.m. But they have a 7, you know who else has a 7 a.m. Uh, class up here? And I drove past it one time. There were 16 motherfuckers rolling. I pulled over and counted, you know what I mean? I'm an econ major, Alfred, Alfred, Alberto Crane. Oh, really? Right down the corner. That's where yeah. Kenny Florian goes. Yeah. So fucking Alberto Crane's got a 7 a.m. class. Go over there. It's a bunch of people who work 10 hours who go to fucking jujitsu first. You got to look at those guys and go, what the fuck are you thinking? The reason why I don't go, let me tell you why I don't go to 7 a.m., because a lot of people go in there without taking showers. They got that <laughs> coffee breath. They hit you rolling with somebody. They hit you with that bad breath in the morning. I will lose my mind. I used to, <laughs> That's I used their to go, secret to victory, I used man. to go to 10 a.m. kickboxing classes, and there'd be some stinky motherfuckers in there from the night before, and i get pissed off. I can't tolerate that shit. <laughs> so you gotta, I, go to, I, I take a shower before I go to jiu-jitsu, even if I fucking took a shower already, just really? to make sure. Yeah, man. <laughs> I respect other people. You got to, you know, I, I want to smell like Irish Spring while you're choking me. You know what I'm saying? I want you to, if you smell the Irish Spring on my neck while you're choking me, you may have mercy on my fucking soul. You know what I'm saying? When was the last time you fought, Rich? Uh, 2012. How does it feel? It, you, I'll tell you, it's, I, honestly, man, I, like I feel better now than, than I felt in the last 10 years of my life. You broke your hand the last fight? No, not the last fight. I broke my arm the fight before that, though. Liddell? Yeah, he okay. kicked me. I remember you broke your hand. Who was the last fight? Kong. I got knocked out. Kong Lee? Yeah. I don't remember this shit. So. Yeah, me, me neither. No, <laughs> Seriously, what is that like? Do you remember leading up to that? or is What, getting knocked out? Yeah. Yeah, every, every, every fight's different, but... um. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've had fights where I've won, and I've got I got a couple uh, fight before fight before Fung, I, uh, uh, Kung. I fought um, Vanderlei Silva, and Vanderlei dropped me in the second round. And you know, I don't, like legitimately, I don't remember like the, the right, remainder of that round, the third round, or the fourth round. Right. And that had happened to me in a fight before. Uh, and I'm sitting in the corner between fourth and fifth round. I'm just sitting there, like and my coaches. They start they're talking, and when you the best way I can describe it is when you get dropped. And your coaches are talking. Like when it first happens, you hear this like whistle, like like a hum in your head. Yeah. But then when you like sit down in the corner, like the best way, it's like want 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 like the adults from the Peanuts. Yeah, yeah, teams, yeah. Right. But then I just remember sitting there between the fourth and fifth round, and all of a sudden like things started coming too, and I was like, "All right, guys, I'm back." Nice. Right, you know, like it's one yeah. of those deals. But then I went home and I watched myself fighting, and I'm like, "Man, when I, I fight better when I'm on autopilot." Right. Yes. You know? You're not yes. thinking. Crazy. You're not thinking. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're not know? thinking. Like, you just yeah. reflex. So crazy. Man. That man. is awesome. Like, yeah, it makes you feel bad though. You're like, "Well, damn." Maybe I need to get clocked in the head to yeah. to get it going. It's but but now nah, you know, like um, most of the time when you get dropped like that, like it's. I remember being in the fight. I remember being in that fight and really getting in, into my rhythm and just like doing my thing. You know, I landed a couple punches and then he threw a kick to my midsection. And I remember kind of like trying to, you know, parry the kick and it caught me a little bit and I was like irritated, like irritated yeah. with myself. Like, really? You just let that happen to right. me? Right. And then kind of I was like setting in and, and then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in my locker room. I'm like, what the hell, man? Right. You know, one of those deals. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's like, but you know, then you got to go back and watch everything to see, 
what happened, which yeah. stinks because <laughs> you're like, oh, timber. Do you ever take a fight on really, uh, like, someone something changed at really short notice? Like, they just signed that Bellator guy, mm-hmm. and they they switched to fight. Like, they just took a guy out, like, a month before. That, like, how, how like, because we were talking about the fight camps. Like, how crazy is that, like, the two weeks so, before I have a new listen, opponent? You, you know what? You, you didn't, like, think about it. Boxing, like, you didn't see that crap growing up in boxing. You see boxing matches that don't happen over a half a pound. Like I'll know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight him at 144. I'll fight him at 143 and a half. I'm like no 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 I'm not cutting to 143 and a half. It's like these guys in in MMA man I'm like I'll fight 205. I'll fight 185. I'll fight one. I'll fight a catch weight. Where do you guys want me? It's so crazy, but it, it really is difficult, man. Last minute to have like your fight change because you're so opponent specific that you've you, you know it's like your your developed habit like you've de- really honed in on this habit like I'm going to defend the shot this way I'm going to throw a punch this way I'm going to set up with this fake or whatever your complete game plan changes like it's 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 terrible so actually um I was training for Kong and I was on the other side of the world I was training in Singapore and I was training specifically with guys who were stylistically like him and then um Vitor got hurt, and that's how I ended up fighting Vanderlei. But that switch, and I was like, gonna fight in the states, and suddenly it's like, oh well, you're not fighting in the states. We need you to fight in Brazil, and it's two weeks earlier instead of you know. It was like all this stuff. Like we need you to fight two weeks earlier in a different in a different country. You're on the other side of the world. I had like get my butt back home, get my time zones realigned, and it was it was crazy, man. Like that that stuff happens. I can't imagine, dude. That's uh, it's uh, I, I no matter even when I was ten. And I love sports. I love sports to a degree, you know. And then uh, MMA came along, or the UFC came along. Because for a long time, I wouldn't even watch Strike Force because it felt like I was cheating on the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> I was such a fan of the UFC and that my ties were the UFC that I wouldn't even watch it. And it's so weird how I've always, once I started watching the UFC, I became a better comedian. Really? Yeah. Because I started, I, I watched them, and I com- I started comparing comedy to mixed martial arts. I've, I've heard it compared to a boxing match In the recently. sense of, like, uh, like my writing was jujitsu, fighting on my back, and, and my performance was striking, and, and, and I had breathing involved and pauses when you rant. You know, with jujitsu, sometimes you play possum, then I got to go for your leg and try to tie you up. You yeah. know, so there was all these things. And then I would watch... I, I gotta say it. I would watch like Joe Daddy Stevenson, who I was mm-hmm. a fan of from The Ultimate Fight. I like Joe, man. I love. Went Joe. to Japan with Joe. Uh, he, he went. He went over to uh, Okinawa in Japan with me to visit the troops one year. You know, Joe's a good guy. I think he's 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 teaching somewhere. He's got a school or something yeah, now. Yeah. Great guy, but he didn't evolve. Every yeah. fight, he didn't evolve, and it's like Showtime. When I'm strolling to tonight, when I get home tonight, I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep. After I watch, uh, after I do comedy, so I'll go home and go, and, and somebody that I just know as an acquaintance is on Showtime doing a thirty-minute thing. I'm cheering for him, right? But when I see him do a joke he did at the Laugh Factory six months ago, I turn it off. <laughs> I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. You know, it was like watching Tito at the end. I'm a fan of Tito. How many more times are you gonna go for that fucking takedown? You're a mile away. I'm a fat forty-year-old, and I'm you're a fucking mile away. Why do you keep going for that fucking takedown? It ain't working for you. Yeah. It didn't work the last three fights. That's So I would say, if that joke don't work, get the fuck rid of it. Right. It didn't work the last fucking weekend. Instead of me beating it for, you know, how many times are you going to throw that fucking spinning, which I can't stand, that spinning back fist? Yeah. Why? Why are you wasting your fucking time? Why? You're killing me. Stick to the fucking jab, all right? Everybody wants to fly through the fucking air. <laughs> It would drive me crazy. After, after uh, Showtime, did the, uh, you saw the kick off the cage, right? That I didn't mind. Yeah. That was But after, after he did that, everybody was like, oh, I got to do that too. Yeah. yeah. And, well, it, well, it's the same thing that happened with, uh, what's his name, with the, with the jab. Then people saw the effectiveness yeah. of the jab. Well, Anderson threw the front kick at Vitor. Everybody's throwing a fucking front kick now. Something that you and I, that was our main weapon. We yep. were growing up. That little snap kick was beautiful. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, we forgot about it. All of a sudden, everybody forgot about it. You know, and when I first lost, I was 418 pounds. And when I first lost the weight, I had heard about these two brothers in Denver that were fucking nuts, these black dudes. And then somebody told me one time that they had opened up a school here now. And they taught not, uh, they didn't teach uh, Kajakempo, they taught the other one. So I started going down there. 
and I, and I was there for two years. I loved the place. It's just that the, they ran the school on black time. If the class supposed yeah, to start yeah, at ten, yeah. it starts at ten to eleven. I got, are no yeah, I got a one o'clock audition. You know, <laughs> I, I'm I'm here to do ten to eleven fifteen. I got a one o'clock audition. You'd walk in there ten to eleven, like, and everybody's sitting there, like, hey, what's? And I'm like, no, what the fuck? But I loved it. But the point being that they uh, used to always talk to me about traditional martial arts, how they watched. They would sit there and watch UFCs, and nobody was doing traditional martial yeah. arts. I mean, this was way before Machida started, and they would keep selling it, how they wanted to train somebody to go in and pick motherfuckers apart with different, and all of a sudden, it was like he was talking into the universe. Yeah, They did the front kick, the jab, there was something else that they were doing that I saw him one time. He goes, did you see that guy? He used that push kick. That's old school martial arts. And, and I did, now everybody's doing little fucking things. But once somebody does it, everybody else jumps on board. It works. Yeah. You know, what What you do in Muay Thai, you don't do but That's it. You know, that's a good thing, though, because that's like the exact opposite of what you're talking about with like Tito and stuff. You know, you have to evolve with the sport. You have to. Yeah. You have, and that's what, and it made me get better with Khan. Like, oh, right. I got to work on my storytelling now. So yeah. now when I would get on stage, I would use my comedy as combinations. Instead of going three, you know, one, two, and a kick, I would go, I'm going to do, I'm going to come out as a machine gun, then I'm going to take a breather, do two rants, and then I'm going to fucking close with a story to slow them down. So I, I started learning, you know. Right. So it was amazing how I, I, I compared it. Yeah, when did, when did this start? When did this kick in? What like year? a year after watching. When do you uh, think that was? Maybe 2006, yeah. 2007. Right. I was now. I was like, "Fuck it!" And I, you know, when somebody would fight, I'd cheer for them. Right. I'd go to watch them and go, "Come on!" All of a sudden, they do the same move they did the last two fights, and I would sit there and my blood would fucking. <laughs> I would I would fucking You're about up. to step into the ring. Or I would really go up and go, "Stop <laughs> doing that fucking thing, man! Stop it! Stop! Stop! You're irritating me." Well, you get really mad at the big guy. What's his name? Who? Uh, the white guy with the the, the the he's like a heavy guy and he does the jujitsu. He's a heavyweight. Fuck. What's his name? Gonzaga? No. Roy Nelson? Yeah, Roy Nelson. You always get mad at Roy Nelson. Do I? Yeah, you're always like, <laughs> he always goes for the right for the right hand, and you don't know. He's a black belt jiu-jitsu. Oh, know. that's why I get pissed at him. Go fucking take him down, <laughs> fuck. Dude, that's like, what's up? You're 280. That's it. They're done. <laughs> if you're a Brazilian black belt, and you're 280 pounds, you're tapping motherfuckers without even attacking an arm. Because I could lay on Rich Franklin right now, and he'll push me around after two minutes. That's going to be the toughest two minutes of his life. And I only got one white stripe. I'm 310. Once I get on my tippy toes, Rich Franklin knows. He don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck how many TRTs or milkshakes. You ain't getting me off. Bro. So if fucking he gets on you and puts that shoulder on you against your chin and you're on the floor, he could sit there for fucking three minutes. How long is a round? Five. Are you fucking kidding me? If he got you, pulled you down, and just put his shoulder into you, you ain't getting up. 265? <laughs> Let's pretend. Right heavyweight is 265. 265. Let's pretend he doesn't go to steak and shake the night before. <laughs> Let's pretend he doesn't go home, listen to Leonard Skinner, and go to steak and shake right there on the strip. He's going to be tipping the scale at 273, 274. A black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu who knows how to use his leverage. And he, he can move. He can move. He can move. You ain't He's going got cardio. Nowhere. He's got cardio, so if I was him, I'd come out of the gate like a fucking man possessed. I'd take him, I'd bite somebody, and I'd fucking take him down and just lay on him and fucking crush him for three minutes. Look over at Joe Silva and wave. Uh, you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> He'd be down there turning purple, and then it's all over. You, you're mesmerized. Even when you get up, I don't care how tough you are. Last week, somebody laid on me, and they, they fucked up my rib <laughs> with my own elbow, with my own fucking elbow. Yeah. And this guy was 180, but he's a fucking brown belt. He, he, know, knows, he knows how to... That, yeah, it's a, you, you, Come on. That's the thing. Like, I mean, I, I walk around about 205, 210, and, uh, and, and I can make myself feel like I'm like 275. Please. My buddy John Evan from Cabrinha, he's 170 with, with a rock in his pocket. When he gets you in that side control... One day my eye popped open like this. The thing popped like this, and I couldn't stop blinking. Oh I had a tap from blinking because he fucked up my jaw. You understand me? Yeah. That, it's amazing. That's why I get mad at Roy Nelson. I, but I love you, Roy. I'm fucking, you know. 
What do you think, though? You don't, you don't know fucking around. We, we got to get yeah, Rogan right, to put you in one of these fights, dude. No, You've I, inspired I can't do me it. to. I can't fucking do it. I can't. What, in, a, in a fist fight? I just, no, I just want to see. <laughs> Are you fucking the, the way you're talking about all this, I want to see it. Maybe I want to see it. It sounds so beautiful. Go crazy? Oh, no, I want to see you fight. I would, I would fucking go crazy if I was in somebody's corner because I can't take that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if I really like you. I don't want to see you get punched in the head. So I'm going to no, go crazy. No. I'm going to yell and scream. I'm going to fucking say shit to you. I'm just gonna keep fucking getting you here. We gotta go in there and fucking kill this motherfucker. You're only just making people want to watch the show more. I'm telling you, though, I bring your mom. That's 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 the best trainer. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody figured out in the UFC. Your mom. Nobody brought their mom in that motherfucker. <laughs> to do what? Just mom, to the fight. Over. Just come to the fight. I can't do it. Listen, to mom. Because your mom is the best trainer. Your mom can make you do shit nobody else can make you do. <laughs> Sonny, you're on your back. Turn over. Bite him. And all of a sudden, you get like that Rocky Power when he heard his retarded wife. What was the name? Adrian. Adrian. Remember when he heard Adrian when the hat fell off? Fucking that dude was a Momo, but he heard her hat fall off. That's what made him snap. Remember somebody took a hat and he went fucking nuts? Same thing. If your mom's in the corner, you think about that. How bad would you feel? You don't know nobody wants to get beat up in front of that mom. Bro. No. You ain't getting your ass kicked in front. You're gonna get I that did. Sh- did you? <laughs> shit. But she wasn't in your corner. No, no but she was the, in the audience. Per, the first fight my mom ever went to oh. was uh, was my Anderson Silva fight. My title no, loss. In Columbus. No, the, uh, that one was in uh, Vegas at, oh. uh, at the Mandalay Bay. Columbus was the rematch. No, C- Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was for the uh, where they do the. Which was her second fight, by the way. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, she, she that was her first fight, and I just came out and. You know, I got my, I got, I think I got my nose broken. It went one direction, then it got rebroken and went the other direction. Did she lose her mind or what? Yeah, or, she was. You know, that, that, my, yeah, that's my mom. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I can't see how she wouldn't. Yeah, you know? so she's, but yeah, that was her first fight. I was like, hey, we don't have to do. Here's this. your introduction to MMA. Hope you enjoyed the matches. That's gotta be. That's like going to see us and bombing. Oh fuck! It's like inviting your I don't invite somewhere. family out anymore. I don't do that at all. I Fucking no way! Because it could the, happen on any of, given Sunday. That's the kiss of death. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trusting her. The last fight I went to, I don't know where it was. It wasn't Baltimore, and somebody was Orlando. fighting the undercard. Orlando. Somebody was fighting the undercard, and their whole family came. They made those T-shirts, <laughs> and this motherfucker got rocked. <laughs> Yeah, like thirty seconds in, like just yeah. da, 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 da. Prior, prior to the fight, the cameras are all over the family. Yeah, the t-shirts. The After the jumped. fight, they're like, "No, we'll just show it." Oh, and camera. the brother-in-law took the shirt off. <laughs> this I'm not with that guy. I'm not with that. I'm divorcing guy. this bitch. I'm mm-hmm. fucking out of this family. Let me give some shout-outs here. This is a fun fucking podcast. Hell yeah! Give some shout-outs here. How come Adrian stuff. wasn't retarded in Rocky Two or Rocky Three? No, she was she only retarded in the first to the clinic. They took her to the clinic. They got a house. You talk to somebody. Yeah, but if you watch, uh, go from Rocky three to Rocky four. Even even uh, Rocky himself wasn't. He was good. They too. were all yeah, smart after that. Yeah, yeah. they, they beat the little, sense into him. They got a little money. Everybody was happy. You know, they were Republicans. <laughs> Let me drop it here. Mike Cavanaugh, I love you, cocksucker. Anthony Perello, thank you for listening. DC Smitty, Michael El Nino, Robert Woolridge, and Jennifer LeBlanc. I like that fucking name, LeBlanc. It sounds like an expensive pen. Yeah, what are you gonna fucking do? You know what I'm saying? People gotta do what they gotta do. And that's it. It was a fun filled fucking yeah. night, man. I can't believe this shit. We got a full house tonight. This, this is a nice conversation podcast. Yeah, it? man. Tons of fun. And then we're Absolutely. in Brea? Yeah, we are in September. We're working in Brea? Yeah. And yeah. You? And yeah. You? See? Lee's, right. gonna, Lee's gonna be there, right? Yeah. Sure. What are you doing all the way down in Brea? Comedy. We got a comedy club down uh, there. The, this? You're doing the podcast? No, now? we oh. just do stand up. Oh, gotcha. Stand-up. We do the podcast. So you're moving the pro- podcast to Brea? No, no, we do the podcast live at the Ice House once a month. Gotcha. In fact, Herb Dean called me today to be on his show, and he's done the podcast a couple of times. I've had Herb at the live podcast. Yeah. Herb, Herb's he's, a good dude, man. Herb's a really camp. fucking good dude, people. man. I was talking to him one day on a plane about Kempo Karate, and he gave me his number. And I'm like, he's like, call me during the week, I'll take you to a Kempo play. I'm like, that's amazing. He's the sweetest guy in the world. That's the thing about the UFC, that you meet a lot of nice guys. And I was fans of all you guys. Like, I just... I know the work that goes into it. I can't even fucking imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine doing two hours of rolling, going home, having a kale shake. Because after two hours of rolling, <laughs> you got to kill... Listen, my shake today had spinach in it, too. Just spinach, right. kale. Yeah. Fuck the shake. After two hours of rolling, you need a steak. Yeah. A good, <laughs> thick steak with a baked potato, a salad, and that. Not these guys. They drink that kale shake. Mike Dolce talks to you about peanuts, <laughs> and then you head to some other fucking place to box. Have, have you met Mike? Oh yeah, yeah, He's an awesome Mike's guy. Man. Mike's awesome great. Guy. Mike's fucking great, man. Yeah. But his recipes are fucked up. I like the chia seeds. I like the tuna with the avocado in it. But that other shit drives me crazy. I can't. Really? I'm not a veggie guy. 
Yeah. Hey, well, he, but he's, he's a meat eater. Yeah, his spaghetti's really good. His spaghetti's fucking Have delicious. you tried his uh, his ice cream that he makes? No. Oh, man. he. Would. So Mike and I did a bunch of uh, a bunch of military bases together. We were doing um, some, for Air Force Reserve, doing some uh, talking about nutrition, just stuff like that, you know, health and fitness. There have been a, a lot of people on, that were failing PT tests. So Mike and I would go around talking a lot of bases together, and uh, he would give his recipe that he makes for ice cream. And he actually put spinach in his ice cream. Everybody's like, <laughs> like, legit. He said, man, it's it's good, it's good stuff. I believe him, man. Like, you know, it's got some like dates in it and stuff like that, and he blends it up. Right. But, but yeah, some and some ice cream with some. I mean, it's not. It's no dairy. It's dairy free. But it's really cool. Mike recipe. knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Mike is very good. Uh, it's amazing the whole. You know, I grew up on boxing. Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Dan Cormier and John Jones went out of the press junket. And people were fucking, you know, I grew up on boxing, but that shit happened all the time. When I was growing up, those boxes, you know, Aguayo against Duran, those motherfuckers threw some chairs and shit yeah. like that, you know? It's not, it's been done before. I don't know why people, but it's amazing the whole different level, the mentality. When you boxed, you had two guys, you had the main guy, you ate, you did all this stuff. Now the technology, it's like on it, it's optimization. Like now, you know, uh, when you watch a martial artist or when you watch a UFC fighter, Every time they do one of those, uh, uh, whatever, you know, a preview to the fight, yeah. they're doing this, out like they're going in freezers now and getting mm-hmm. frozen for three minutes. It's a technology, <laughs> you know? It's true. They go in there. You know, man, I, I, did, yeah. I did the cryo chamber, and uh, and I, honestly, I just, you, have you, you guys see these, uh, the ice bucket challenges? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I actually, everybody's dumping buckets. I sat down in a bucket of ice and put out a picture and said, here's my ice bucket challenge. And, um, but, you know, everybody, like, Honestly, man, sitting in a, a, an ice tub was to me way worse, meaning better, um, than the cryo, the little the cryo tubes. So I don't know. I've done the cryo tube a few times, but yeah. And, and what does that do for you? Uh, reduces inflammation and gotcha. you know helps with like like acid buildup in the muscles and re- just recovery in gotcha. general. Yeah. A lot of people do it. I guess it shuts the blood away from the the core. Yeah. Eddie Bravo does it twice a week, and he always tells I, it. I did. I, I was doing it three times a week for 15 minutes. Uh, and, <sighs> and, and, <laughs> dude, and you you would sit in this ice. You we sit in this ice tub, and like if somebody would come by and just hit the water, like the water moves, and it's like you're already sitting in cold water. So it's like how how much worse can it be? Right. But I'm telling you, man, like once that water has motion in it, so my coach would just sit there and just like just stir his hands. Oh no! Oh man. 15 minutes of that stuff it's brutal and I do it three times a week after my three hardest workouts made a big difference though big difference so what's Ooh. the new title you have with this company uh, I'm, I'm a VP for them man I'm like I'm, I'm a big deal <laughs> I don't know I don't man. <laughs> are you gonna send us some hats S- hats hell yeah I'll send you whatever man now you guys ever gonna fight in the states or just overseas I, I think I think eventually their expansion plan will come to the states um we, you, you, they, they've talked about it and all that kind of stuff, but uh, eventually they'll, they'll plan on being here. But there, there's some time off of that for now. You know, they they're they're doing their first show in Dubai, and I mean, it, the, the, it's tricky for them because they're not just in one country. Like before the end of this year, they're doing show in uh, in there'll be Dubai, the Philippines, uh, in Manila, um, in Singapore, in Beijing. Uh, where else are we? I think we have one more show before the end of the year that I'm missing. But yeah, I mean, so they're they're like they're not in one country. So every you're going to a new country every time. It gets really really difficult concept. But it's a big leap to come all the way to the states too, you know. But we I'll tell you what, no. We they they put on some some awesome shows, man. We just we just did a show in Taipei. Uh 10 bouts on it. All 10 bouts were all finishes. Some, you know, nice nice quick knockouts, some good entertaining long, you know, drawn out fight of the night type fights and uh, it was good stuff but they use a they use a global rule set just like Pride did not exactly like Pride because you can't stomp to the head on the ground but you can you can knee and kick <laughs> to the head on the ground oh my god and I've seen I've seen some people get lit up man sure and it's, uh, it's pretty crazy and it's, a, it's not an octagon it's a ring like it's, it's, a, it's a circle a circle yeah okay. it's great that you're doing great things man yeah uh, it's amazing that last week I read somebody retired who retired last week Krasinski, what's his name? Oh yeah, the, because, because he says he he, memory, memory and stuff like yeah. that. And I sit here across from you, and you're great. I mean, yeah, I'll tell you, man. Great. This and the, you, you talk about that, like all these fights and stuff. Like physically, 
I feel good enough. But I start, I think about my career, and, and you know, I've, I've been knocked out a couple times, you know. But even in fights that I've won, I've, I've been caught before, and there are flashes of rounds that that just have escaped me. And so, uh, you know, I, there's part of me that's that's kind of like, yeah, you know, you you, I've, I've, I've been hit in the head enough, you know, like, uh, wait, yeah, but you're always like, ah, one more, you know, you wake up and I'm like, man, I feel like just, you know, you're hungry, you yeah, know, like that. The whole uh, Rocky Balboa movie when he's like, I think I got one more in the gas tank, you know, like you have that feeling all the time. So it's it's difficult because and I always tell people, you know, I'm, I'm at an age, I'm at an age where most men my age, they do stupid stuff like go get tattoos and date women half their age and stuff like that and, and buy a sports car that they can't afford. And but at this age, you're at an age where you have to accept like you can't do the job that you love doing. You know, people like my grandfather, like they work until their 70s or whatever and at the same factory forever until somebody finally says, look, you're, you're, you're too old to do the job that you've been doing. And they have to accept that at 70. But in my line of work, I have to accept that at, you know, in your late 30s, basically. It's hard. Yeah, it is you know? hard. Because yeah. you, still, you still have that desire sometimes. Yeah. So. so, yeah. That's amazing. Hey, listen, at least you're still in the game. You know, you're yeah. still around it. One thing I've noticed, like I, when when Christian, that's his name, Christian, mm -hmm. said that last week. I remember um, thinking about it, and I got to be honest with you, you know, and I, I don't know who specifically. There's times I've gone to UFC fights and I've met fighters five years ago, and I could see something different. Oh, know, absolutely. Maybe a little slur, maybe a little something, you know. And uh, I'm sure you've seen it because you were around the game more. It's and gonna I, be. It'll be interesting to see what how this all develops. You know, 20 years from now. The difference is, the difference between this and the NFL, because the NFL is having a lot of problems with all these concussions and stuff like that. But the difference between this and the NFL is that, you know, like when a fighter fights, they're they're on their own. You know, they're, they're, you were talking about this at the top of the show about hiring nutritionists. And like, I mean, I, I have a strength coach, a, you know, strength conditioning coach, and who also helps me with my nutrition and, and uh, a boxing coach and a kickboxing coach and a wrestling coach and a jiu-jitsu coach and a manager and you know I mean like you have all these people and so uh, it's I go and like I, I do my own thing between fights you know so it's not like there's this like standard thing like you go you play for the Cincinnati Bengals or you play for the Pittsburgh Steelers like you're pretty much within the system of, right. of medical the medical field it's gonna be consistent everywhere you go um, but is there a union for fighters I don't think yeah, though there ain't dick <laughs> it's like comics. We Again, it's like being a comic. It's like a comic. There's yeah. no insurance. There's no, there's nothing. You're on Jesus. your own. And you don't realize that too. you're on your own. Most yeah. people don't. You know, when they're, when they're spending money and jumping up and down and people sucking your dick, <laughs> you don't think about going broke. You know, it's after the dust settles that somebody comes to you and they says, hey, you haven't had a fight in fucking uh, five years. And you're spending like, you know. So it's it's got to be hard in a lot of different areas. But... It, remember when you just used to just fight, dude? The, the, it's it's funny. Well, What's I'll tell you what. That's just fought? the the nice thing about uh about not fighting right now is like I'll go into the gym and I just go into the gym to train for the enjoyment of just making myself better, not constantly being focused on this is my next opponent because I like you know what I learned like midway through my career even even as even as the the world champ like you know I want to be the best in the world I want to be the best in the world I want to be the best in the world but you really what you really need to focus on is being better than your next opponent. And that's it. Like you don't have to worry about being the best in the world. Like you, you come in with a specific game plan for a specific guy and you, your sole purpose should be, I need to be better than this guy. I need to be whoever it is. I need to be better than him. You don't have to worry about being better than anybody, but the next guy you're going to fight. So now that I'm, now that I'm just, you know, I train, I train for fun. I train for the enjoyment of getting better and not having to focus on the fight game. I can remember being that way when I was younger and then like, all of a sudden showing up at a fight where they stick a camera in your face and like I need you on this queue right here you're going to stand here for we got 15 seconds we're going to walk forward I don't need you to walk too fast watch this court I don't want you tripping over that in five four and you know and they're doing all these hand signs like speed up slow down and you're like you're like wow just what the heck just happened that's here that's funny because you know? all it's, you want to do is fight yeah, and you got all yeah, this shit going you know, on and so now and then and, and I went through that transition of all that when the, the UFC was a smaller show in the day. And uh, and so suddenly it's like you go from that to, uh, well, I need you to conduct this interview. I need, and then I need you to wake up at 4 in the morning on a week when I'm cutting weight and because these people are in a different country. And, 
you know, and then radio. Yeah. Morning radio. Morning radio. Yeah. Guys, You're doing you morning promote, radio tours, you know. You promote morning radio when you do a movie. You have to. Same way. They, they put you on these fucking call. You got to wake up at five in the morning and talk to a Spanish radio station. <laughs> and, and you got to tell them the same story and whatever. Oh, and yeah. It's a fucking nightmare, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm happy it all worked out for you, Rich. You're yeah. one of the pioneers, you know. I mean, no matter what anybody says and shit, you guys are one of the pioneers of the sport to what it is now. So I uh, you still look good. You're healthy. God bless you. I'm you bless. I'll tell you what, man. God's blessed me. Yeah, truly. Yeah, yeah. And worst case now, you could always teach fucking math again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that nah, shit. Not happening, bitches. Not happening. Did anyone not do their Rich homework? Rich Frank was making a comeback. <laughs> What's his name? He's teaching high school fucking in DC. What's Who? his name? Who's the boss? Marion Barry. Tony Danson. Tony Danson. He's got a job teaching in high school. Not because things are bad, because. Sometimes you want to go back to what you love. Yeah. Sometimes you hit an age and you're like, what the fuck? I never played the piano. Right. It's over. I'm going right. down the fucking guitar center tomorrow I'm, and I'm hanging out with Chad I'm that guy every day, man. I've, yeah, got, I've got more hobbies than I got time. Ah, please. Yeah. I like the Jamaican. Yeah, yeah, but with hobbies, yeah. All right, let me fucking do these sponsors here. Lee, you have a good time tonight? Yeah, that was crazy. Are we going out to the store? We're going out or are you going home? I don't know. I'll probably go home. How many diet points do you have left tonight? Not have many. Left? How many you got left? I've been following Lee on Twitter, man. Have you? What are you eating tonight, Lee? What are you eating tonight? I had a, 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 that Asian place over by uh, Burbank, the, the uh, Asian box. Oh, the Cuban the, like, Asian box. place? No, no it's no, right no, by no. the movie theater. It's like this little Asian Chipotle sort of thing. But they they were good, and I saved half of that because I knew I was going to get high. So, Because <laughs> I, I, I knew you always do this to me, so I was like, I don't know. I don't do nothing to you. I don't do nothing to you. Which, frankly, I don't do fucking nothing. I just show up and your eyeballs are red. I don't know what the fuck happened. Oh, my God. He gave, we, we had some of these before the steak dinner, and he ordered the most delicious chocolate cake, and, like, it was, it lasted, like, three minutes in front of us because it was, like, two hours in the edible. And it was just, it was crazy. We were both on diets. We said, fuck it. It's all over. I'm getting knee surgery next week. I'm gonna get the chocolate. It's candy. amazing how you justify bad. Yeah, you, you know, like, we just said like oh, I'm getting knee surgery. Oh, you know what? It's Saturday anyway. I just, you know, I, no. I messed up yesterday. Might as well just finish out the weekend and I'll start fresh again on I, Monday. My wife went out of town, so I knew I was gonna take him for a steak. So I went to North Hollywood Park. I got two thirty-five pound kettlebells, and I went in that motherfucker and went nuts. Fuck the knee. I started doing farmer walks and kettlebell swings and cleans. I got back to that call. I was thinking about with that steak, and I sat there for an hour. <laughs> I sat there for an hour. I went home and made a protein shake, 300 calories with no carbs. I went home and sat there with that chocolate fucking shake in my stomach. And when he came over to get me, it was all over. I, I attacked the steak. I got a chopped salad, and I got the fucking a little potato. That's it. It yeah. was easy. When the, but the cake was too big. I couldn't finish it. He couldn't no, finish no, it. No, we didn't finish we it. We split it. We couldn't finish it. It was too much. Oh, Lee, you had some? I had a little bit. Yeah, I, I had fucked a, his world up. But I can't do... How many calories you burn today? Tell Rich Franklin on the oh, it, treadmill. He walked from here to fucking it's all, it's the only, offices of your company. Just 800. 800 like four, calories. He like walked four from miles. the treadmill. It's not bad. And I'm trying... Like, I've, I've never been in shape, so it's... When you were saying, like... It, you, when, no, no, no. When you were saying how you, how you go to sleep after a workout, like you take an hour nap, when I, I started working out for the first time in my life, two like a little over two months ago, when he was on a podcast... I worked out for like 20 minutes and I slept for like 17 hours. <laughs> it was the craziest thing that it's ever happened. But but now, like it's two months in, I'm getting better at it. But it's, You're back. You're like a savage. No, but when you were saying, oh, I sleep for an hour, I went home. and this is, I, I, I don't think I... Oh, I think, this is this what you need to do yeah. when you can't sleep at night. Oh, God. Oh, work out? Yeah. Yeah, 24 hours. You know what? Hours. I actually have a question because Joey has, he has been on me and I, I'm trying to go earlier in the day to get like yeah. my metabolism started and everything. But the reason why I... I like I kind of don't like earlier in the day is I feel like I don't have enough energy. Yeah. Like so, is it? That's why. Is it okay to work out later? Like, yeah, it I, is. Here, yeah. listen. There are two things that speed up your metabolism. Oddly enough, there there are only two ways to speed up your metabolism. That's either working out or putting food in your system. Because he don't do that. For yeah. 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 He, he won't that, that was the so worst. You yeah. need to, you so need to eat right out of the gate. Right. I tell him to get up and drink water. Yeah. Uh, Dolce says but drink it, a glass of water. But Just but get even the still, going. You, but even still, water won't burn things. Like not. I mean, it's better than nothing. But you still like you're. Oh no, I've been dog. Coming. He won't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Till two o'clock, he won't eat. Yeah. I'll ask him. Oh, that's what he tells me. I haven't eaten. No, no, no I've been I've been better now. But he's since better I, since I've been that's on the worse diet. For you, so you got to get up in the morning. Yeah, and man, your else. metabolism's flatlined. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, and then your body goes in storage mode. And as soon as you eat something, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. I can't burn this. We were talking about that last night. How how like if we're eating healthy, we'll have one. 
one meal and gained seven pounds. Yeah. It's like unbelievable yeah, how just good. Like, if you saw how much food I eat in a day, you'd be like, what? <laughs> you don't eat at all? No. No, I mean, I, I eat so much food. Yeah. I, I had, I had a, my, my cousin one time, he was doing a uh, Biggest Losers contest at work. And uh, he calls me up and he's like, hey, man, can you help me help me with this thing? I'm like, dude, look, if I take time to do your nutrition, like, don't waste my time. He's like, I'll do everything you tell me to. So I set up his nutritional plan, and I said, and I and I, and I give it to him on a spreadsheet. I said, all right, here's the deal. I said, you. I said you're gonna give out. You're gonna look at this, and you'll be like, oh, this seems like a decent amount of food. And I said, you're gonna start eating tomorrow. You're gonna be about halfway through your day, and think, should I be eating this much food? And then you're about three quarters of the way through your day, and you're not gonna be hungry anymore, and you're not gonna be able to eat all the food, and you're gonna want to call me, and say, Rich, you sure I should be eating this much food? At which point I'm gonna say, yeah, eat everything on the list. And events unfolded exactly like that, but in like. Uh, in eight weeks, he lost uh, 48 pounds, 48 and a half pounds or something. Wow. And he was eating. Like, I mean, he's competing against guys that are just, like, starving themselves and stuff. And he's showing up with, like, more food. He's like, you know, he's eating, like, rubbing it in. So, like, he's like, gosh, man, I'm so full. I can't I can't finish all this quinoa in here, you know. Like, I, I really would like to give you some, but, uh, you know, you're, you're over there starving yourself. And uh, But he ended up winning the contest, you know. Nice. Because that's how, I mean, that's how nutrition is, man. If you're If you're eating good food. You know, it's the, the you know you're not eating things that are like uh, you know like chips and cookies and stuff right. like that. I, I, put, I tweeted out one time. I said, try to like if you're the type of person that sits down and eats like because I'm I, dude I'm, I don't have a stopping mechanism. That's no. my problem. So I'm I'm either I'm either 100 miles an hour or zero. There is no in between for somebody like me. And so I like you know I'm the kind of guy where if you're like, hey man, just try this cookie. I'm like, no, because there's a whole plate there and I'll eat every damn one of them. Right. So I'm that guy like when I open a pack of Oreos. It's at least a row, if not the entire pack. But I wouldn't like ever finish like midway through a row. Like, how are you gonna leave a row half uneaten? And, you know, <laughs> who does? Who eats half? rookie shit? Exactly. So if you're gonna do something, do it right. But um, but yeah. So um, that's that's my thing. But I, so I just don't touch that stuff. But I always, I, I tweeted out one time. I said, if you like, if you're that kind of person, like, try to match the the grams of sugar that you just ate in your Oreos with apples. Cause like to eat a row of Oreos is easy for me. Like I can dust off a row of Oreos and then I'll be sitting there like I don't I don't know if I want to start the second row because I got to get through that second row too, you know. Right. And then so it's like if you eat a whole row of Oreos, it's like the equivalent of like say like six or seven apples, you know. Try to do that and then if you, you get like two apples in, not and you're like, man, I can't, I can't eat anymore. I'm gonna get sick. Eating apples is hard. It's, but it's just crazy. <laughs> My point is, is that when you're eating nutrient dense food. Like that, and you, you you can grant you can match gram for gram, but you you can't do it because it's just you know it's because it's healthy. Right. Get together, cocksucker. That's all you need to worry about. Eat your breakfast, Lee. We'll eat your no, breakfast. I mean, <laughs> then, I, then he got breakfast. Dude, he started eating breakfast, but he started eating microwave breakfast. <laughs> nah. He can't put in a fucking microwave. I had to talk about doing once. egg whites with spinach. No, you don't. Not you once. Doing. You just don't eat one of those fucking things <laughs> once, okay? You were eating them for like three weeks, and I go, you can't microwave your fucking breakfast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You gotta get the fucking the salads and the, the, the whole thing. Even yeah. I, I'm lazy, and I'll make a uh, one egg. I'll fry no, I make every day. I have the same thing. What? I have egg whites, egg, and which actually aren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. They're but, fucking disgusting, dude. They're 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 bland. You put whatever on them. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah, but so a couple spinach. You put some Oreo cho- cookies. You, yeah, on I mean, there. in theory, you could put chocolate sauce on egg whites. Yeah, it sounds disgusting, but I mean, there's, there's no taste to them. And I know this isn't the right way, like the perfect way to do it. But just since this is the first time I'm trying to diet, I'm just doing straight calorie counting. I know there's better ways, and and you don't have to count some, but it's just it's easy for me to focus on. So it's it's just it's uh, but it's I, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Dude, listen, he's, he's, he's high on up. drugs. He's high on drugs. Calorie, calorie counting is not a necessity <laughs> to live by, but it's a good way to like it's a good way to give yourself like a, a marker. Like I'll, I'll tell people like. You know, measure out how, how many grams of carbohydrates you're eating for this meal, and then and then section off your sweet potato and see what that is. Like, t- if if you actually looked at how many calories you need in a day, and you say, okay, well, I only need you know I only need 45 grams of carbs, and then you see what that is like in a potato or a sweet potato, and you're like, oh wow, I, I only need to eat this much of it, not this much of it. Yeah, uh, th- it makes you aware of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You live, you learn. No, yeah. All right, for total optimization. <laughs> Go to onit.com. They got what you need. They got the alpha brain. It'll get your mind shooting fucking cylinders. It's like the 4th of July in your head. I can right? use it right now. I know you can. You can use a fucking <laughs> a stab to the neck, too. Also, hemp force protein. Delicious. 16 grams of protein per serving. Cocoa fucking tastes delicious. The icy vanilla, icai vanilla, whatever the fuck the Brazilians call it. 
They look like grapes to me. I don't give a Acai. fuck. Acai, whatever. <laughs> Onnit.com. Go to the box and press what, Lee? Church. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And get 10% temp- off your first order. Also, they got the fucking coffee. They got the battlebags.com. They got everything you need, all right? So go over there. If you, st- if you join up for the Stay On It program where they mail it to you directly every month, you get 20% off your first order. Number two, naturesbox.com just sent me a fucking box. Delicious. The lemon almond biscuit, fucking tremendous. The cinnamon swirl kettle corn, tremendous. I ain't fucking around with you people no more. You get 50% off your first order, all right? 50% off. You don't need to eat white bread or potato chips. These are healthy, nutritious snacks. They come with a seal. You take a handful and you put them back in the thing and you don't have to act like a savage all your fucking life, all right? And you don't go over your little calorie counter like we. Go to naturebox.com, press in. Joey. Boom, in the box and get... 50% off your first order delivered to your house, to your man cave. I don't give a fuck. They'll deliver it there. I don't care if you live in Alaska in an igloo. They'll deliver it there right to your house. Nailed it life. Listen, you want a vapor pen that lasts? What happens if you get hit by a fucking tornado? Everything's gone. You got a vapor pen. You can get hot. Go to, go to, go to nailedinlife.com and get your vapor pen now. They got t-shirts on there. I love these guys. Dave's a great guy. His brother's great. Go over there and get, what do you get? 20% off 20% the pen. 20% off. So you get it for 40 fucking bucks. Who's better than you? 40 fucking bucks. You get a, va- uh, vapor a pen. nice vapor pen. You get, and it doubles as a flashlight. And <laughs> i like to welcome the best there. I got a pair on these right now. I'm a fat fuck. And they staple to your waist. Meundies.com. They got a billboard on Beverly. Tremendous. A hot blonde chick with a thong. You can see a pubic hair sticking out of the side. It's just worth getting the fucking underwears for that. If you order before September 1st, you get 20% off your first. 20% off. 20% off. What's the code, Lee? Joey. So go to meundies.com. Slash Joey. Go to the box and press what, Lee? Joey. Joey. Slash Lee. What is it? Make up your mind. It's, it's good. Meundies.com. Backslash They're going to want to buy underwear. They got nice fucking nice. They feel good. Men's and women's. If men's and women's, they're sending us T-shirts and hoodies. If you go to jiu-jitsu and you always get fucked up underwear, like you wear the regular underwear, your nut always falls out <laughs> of the underwear. Not with me undies. That shit stays in there nice. You don't get no moisture in there. It's tremendous. Your balls smell tremendous after jiu-jitsu. A lot of people can't say that, Rich. No, I, yeah. You go to jiu-jitsu, you fucking I'm nuts. Go get some. Your get nuts some. smells like Regan Machado's neck. You know what I'm saying? You don't need that shit. If you wear me undies, your nuts smell nice and fresh. And that's it. I don't know what to fucking tell you. I'll be back here Monday at 6 a.m., but I'm having surgery Tuesday morning, so I'll be back here next Wednesday at 8 o'clock slinging dick and giving out fucking bandages. You understand me? Because that's how we roll. I want to thank my main man, Matt Fultron, for stopping by. I love you with all my heart. I love you, too. Always thank you for having me. something going on. He's going to be in Vegas this week, Friday with Daniel Tosh. Go see him fuck up Daniel Tosh. He's a fucking savage. And we're going to be together at the Bray Improv. What's the date? Uh, it don't matter. September, September 19th, somewhere around there. That's around there. Yeah. Just improvise. Rich Franklin, what can I say to you? My main man from Cincinnati. Hey, I, got, I got fucking family in Cincinnati. You know how warm that makes my heart feel? How warm? Warm, motherfucker, warm. Like microwave breakfast warm, warm? Warmer than 98.6. Somebody, somebody told me that Pete Rose was Cuban one time. I, I don't think so. No, He's from Sailor Park. I know, I mean, yeah. man. I know. Yeah. Somebody told me, dog, don't tell nobody Pete Rose is cute. <laughs> I fucking fell in love. I was like, that's my dog. But let me tell you the saddest thing. He was at the Glendale Galleria three years ago giving out autographs or like signing shit and everybody else's box was packed. Nobody was talking to Pete Rose and Red Band took a picture of Pete Rose just sitting there watching the fucking reading the Santa Anita forms. Fucking hysterical. Yeah. He still goes to the track. You gotta love Uncle Pete. <laughs> you gotta love that, right? Put Pete in the fucking Hall of Fame, cocksuckers. I love you. Have a great weekend. Rich Franklin, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Man. I love you to death, Matt uh-huh. Fultron. We'll be together. Yeah. And my main man, the flying Jew, he's got something to tell you. Oh, Drop it on him, Lee. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Look at the shape. <laughs> Look at the shape. They, they got you in Israel now. They just shoot you. Look yeah. You. Oh, God, okay. All right, hurry up. We got shit to do. Oh, Jesus. Lee, come on. Christ. Don't wait for me. You want to Lee, you got to close this out for us, man. Come on, Lee. Get it together. Now that the show's over, remember, go to naturebox.com. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lee. Look at him. You can do it, man. Come on, Lee. You can do this. You can do this shit. Let's, Let's do go. I'll do it at the end of the podcast. Come yeah. on, Lee. Read the fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shape. Lee's got the oh, giggles. Lord. Oh, shit. We'll let Zeppelin for you. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Stay black. God loves you.